and as we mentioned, Trevin Adams, man, he has really put up some significant numbers. Six one, two hundred pounds. He's a pretty hefty kid at the quarterback's slot. Once again, the give's going to go right off tackle and in for the score. Yep, first down, first touchdown. Cody Metzner. And you look at some of the scores here in eight-man football. I mean, sometimes you see them, they'll, they'll have games of like 75 to 69. I mean, there are some big-time scores in eight-man football. It's fun to watch. I mean, if, you, if you're if you just joining us and have never seen eight-man football, it is a lot of offense and a lot of trickery. So they're going to try the two-point conversion on the keeper. It is Adams in, and he'll score. So it'll make it an eight-point ball game right off the bat here with 10-31 in the first quarter. And you can see why the Cubs of Riverside are such a very dominant team here, Jeff. Oh, you tell, I mean, they, they, they played together since they were kids, and they grow up, and, and, and you, you kind of get a sense that these guys have something a lingering down the line, and, and that is that elusive first CIF championship here at CSDR. And how cool would it be? Last year they came up just a bit short, but so far in their conference, you look at the teams, it's Calvary Chapel, California School for the Deaf Riverside, Desert Chapel, and United Christian Academy. And three of those top of the five teams in the league, three of them are undefeated, both uh, two going 4-0 and, and and United Christian going 3-0. and So a very, very competitive uh, league here uh, in the Tri-County Premier 8-Man Football uh, League. Yeah, they've got some hurdles to climb over the next few weeks as league will league starts next weekend. So it will be quite unique to see them kind of continue on this motivation that they've had over the past few weeks. As Jeff was saying, this team really puts up the, the points on the board. In fact, the first three ball games of this season, they scored 54 points in each of the first three games of the season, followed up by a 62-18 to, to 18 um, victory over the Indiana School for the Deaf. So this is a team, as Jeff had mentioned, will easily put points up onto the scoreboard, and you can see why early here in the first quarter. So this will be the first opportunity that we get to see the offensive scheme as it's a quick kick. Gets picked up right off the bat by number 17, Jamorian Scott, and that's where the Dragons of Florida will operate with a first down and 10. And you will see a lot of onside kicks in eight-man football because the field is shorter. And honestly, it, it's it's a quick, fast-paced game. You don't really work on kicking games very much. Uh, traditionally, you don't. So a lot of onside kicks to try to generate points. You don't see much passing out of the Dragons. You're going to see a primarily a running type of uh, game by this squad. Phoenix Lamberth is going to be your quarterback. He's going to quickly hand off, rounding out to the right side, pick up maybe close to four or five. Will Divis was the ball carrier. So you're, see, you're going to see a variety of different ball carriers with this squad. They will very rarely toss the football. In fact, I, I'd be venture to say you, you'll, you'll see probably less than five attempts unless they start to do something just a little bit different from what I've seen in game film in the past. Yeah, they look like they've started off in a double tight set here and, and Tell you what, they'll eat clock and it keep you in ball games if you can continue to get first downs. If you don't get first downs against this Cubs team, it could be a quick night. Once again, second down, back to pass. They proved us wrong. Toss out into the flat, picked up, remaining on his feet and knocked out of bounds. Nice catch and toss here by the Dragons. Looks like we have a late flag on the play. Coming up with the football is number 18, which I do not have a name and number with. Kind of typical for high school football. Sometimes the rosters just don't match up to what we get received here on the information side. And we are about 3,000 miles away. From that's, that's all. That's all. <laughs> They're based out of St. Augustine, Florida. If you want to know a little bit on the geography side, that's just south of Jacksonville. So it's a little bit on the northern side. So the penalty is going against uh, the Cubs. Wow. Pretty significant. There might have been some extracurricular activity on the sidelines that I did not see, Jeff. Yeah, I'm guessing it was probably a late hit out of bounds, so a personal foul will be assessed to the Cubs here, but that puts them in a great position here to score the football just outside. Looks like the 15-yard line. Yeah, Florida puts themselves in really good position as they're now into the red zone. Two men set in the backfield. Keeper and brought down almost immediately. Felix Gonzalez makes this stop on Lamberth. Looks like it might be a loss of about one on the play. Brings up second down. If 
you're watching CSDR, CSDR is putting 11 in the box, and they're daring them to beat them on the throw. They're going to play tight as well. They're going to go on the outside and push that, that offense to the middle of the field. We've talked about the offensive numbers by Trevin Adams, but he has some very significant defensive uh, numbers as well. We'll talk about that in just a bit. A little bit of a misdirection play. Going to go right up the middle to our mystery player of number 18. Finally brought down. I think they'll give him some forward progress on that one, so it'll be a gain maybe of one to two on the carry. We'll try to find out the name that goes with the number 18 down the road here. But talking about Trevin Adams, he's not only putting up leading numbers offensively, but as well on the defensive side. Averages about nine tackles per game. He is the middle linebacker here for the Cubs of Riverside. A good thing about eight-man football, you have small teams, but you got to be in great shape. You just got to play both ways. Lamberth bobbles the ball, but uh, he was able to hold on, contain it, takes it inside of the 10 where he stopped with the combination of Trevin Adams along with Gio Visco. But is able to get some progress there, gets themselves a little bit closer to the end zone. Now, like I said, a lot of time isn't spe spent on kick the kicking game in eight-man football just because of the sheer numbers you have. So let's see if they're going to go it, as as is a, a, and go for it here in fourth down. Yeah, it is a fourth down scenario, fourth and short. They got to take it right to about the six and a half in order to come up with the first down. Lamberth taking the snap right up the middle. Going to get a little bit of a push. Don't think he has the first down. So that'll be a turnover on downs here, and that'll give the Cubs the football. But unfortunately, the drive falls just short here for the Dragons of Florida. And a great defensive stance there by the Cubs. As we mentioned, the Cubs of Riverside falling just one game shy of winning their very first CIF Southern Section eight-man championship last year, and that has been the biggest motivator for this squad throughout uh, this season, and you can see why. Adams in the shotgun. Look in the pass. Looking long. Tosses it. Catch is made. All in the open. It is nothing but green. Jory Valencia will go in and score. Just like that, they will hit the strike with 7.50 on the clock here in the first quarter. And you can see why Trevin Adams to Jory Valencia are a great combination here for the Cubs of Riverside. Holy cow, what a, what a great strike. And what a way to start this ball game. Our only seven minutes and... 40 seconds left here in the first half. They've already put up 14. We told you it was going to be fast-paced. We told you there would be a lot of points on the board so far, so we're getting things moving here right off of the bat. They will undoubtedly go for the two-point conversion, which they normally do. As uh, Jeff mentioned, they don't normally kick for the point after. A little bit of discussion going on on the sidelines. We haven't talked much about Keith Adams, the head coach for the CSDR Cubs. In his fifth year as head coach, has two sons playing, one of them being Trevin Adams, along with Caden Adams. So a two-point conversion attempt. Adams on the keeper, very easily gets into the end zone, and just like that, another two on the scoreboard here, Jeff. Oh, man, they, I'm telling you what, they are a offensive juggernaut. Going to take a second look. At the long toss here from Adams to Valencia. Nothing but green. He just kind of coasted his way into the end zone on that one. And covering CSDR for years, the Valencia family is a staple here at CSDR. Noah Valencia, several other Valencia brothers or cousins have been phenomenal basketball and football players here at CSDR. Played at Gallaudet University. Um, they are just a phenomenal family and just probably the best athletes this school has ever had is the Valencia family. They just continue to breed on and bring them, uh, bring them on through. As Coach Adams says, he said, I think there's 12 or 13 more of them coming through the <laughs> oh, pipeline. Great. I'm sure that will make their competitors uh, just a little bit on the uneasy side. As you can see, all the communication that goes on in the sidelines because these are deaf players is all through American Sign Language. So it makes it quite a unique situation for these players. 
fact, if, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday was National American Sign Language Awareness Day. So again, bringing some forethought and spotlight onto the deaf community. We're going to check in with Pep Fernandez in just a bit after we get things teed up on this kickoff here. 16 to nothing, 7.53 on the clock here in the first quarter. J.R. Ibar along with Jeff Gorm bringing you all the action here as the Cubs of California School for the Deaf of Riverside taking on the Dragons of the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. Another short kick, and it looks like it'll be picked up with the Dragons. Let's head down the, to the sidelines to hear from Pep Fernandez. Pep? Hey, JR and Jeff. Listen, we just saw Trevin Adams throw that touchdown pass, and when you look at statistically what the Cubs are doing this season, Trevin Adams has put his name all over the stats this year, whether it's passing for touchdowns, running for touchdowns, leading the team in tackles on both sides of the football. Trevin Adams, not only the coach's son, one of two sons on this team, but he's also a great player, and we saw it right now. This could be the beginning of a lot of points for CSDR in this game against the Dragons today, guys. All right, thank you, Ben. They'll keep us up to date as to what is happening from both sides of the sidelines here for Riverside and for Florida. First down and 10, now for the Dragons. Our mystery player, number 18, trying to go off tackle to the left. Looks like he's going to met pretty immediately. Cody Metzler making one of the hits here from the Cubs to really come up with nothing on that carry. Well, you know, and following the Cubs, my, you know, my entire life, you know, my father being a longtime coach here in Riverside used to bring us to a lot of these games as, as kids. And we would watch it. They used to bring a drum, and they would call the offenses right. out with the drums. Right. And I always found that to be so fascinating. But it appears that they've eliminated the drums from the sidelines. Gibb is going to go around and gets wrapped up almost immediately by Gonzalez. The carry is done by Dave Devis, who picks up about a yard on the carry. Yeah, it was about 25 years ago I was here on campus doing a feature report about the football team. And, yes, they were utilizing a big drum. Yes. As far as the, the snap count for the players out in the field, it was quite unique. Yeah, in fact, they still use the drum, but they use it for the cheerleading, right. as I'm hearing. As, you know, it sets off when they when they start their, uh, their routines, and it's a great rhythm uh, to help build the rhythm so they know what's going on. Great, great uh, stuff. When I was a kid, I used to love coming to hear the drum. In fact, we can hear it picking up right now. Looks like the cheerleaders are getting going. It's a third down scenario. Back to pass. Tossing it out to his left. Catch is made. And no, looks like it'll fall incomplete. But a nice attempt by Sincere Vasquez, the tight end, to make the leap. Let's take a look. He, he made a, a grand effort to catch this football. Just cut underneath his legs. And that'll wind up with a fourth down scenario. So it looks like the Dragons have... You know, made the attempt to throw the football, which has actually kind of surprised me just a bit. As I say, I'm looking at past game films. It's a team that has primarily kept things on the ground. It looks like they'll punt this one away. Will Devis will do the punting here for the Dragons of Florida. Back to receive is Felix Gonzalez. Kind of a high snap. Kick is up in the air. Pretty good looking punt. Will back up Gonzalez. He'll let it drop, and it will dribble into the end zone for a touchback. Clock stopped at 635, 16 to nothing here in the beautiful city of Riverside on a very warm afternoon, Jeff. I think uh, hopefully this will not be much of a factor for any of these players as we're sitting at 95 degrees along the sidelines here. Yeah, you know what uh, fall means in California, right? Oh, yeah. You know what that means? It just means it's three more months of summer. That's it. That's it. No surprises here. My air conditioning went out of my house yesterday. Oh, no, not that. Yes, and my family right now sitting at home all angry <laughs> that I'm, I'm sitting Here you at are at a football game, yeah. and you've got a family at home with no air conditioning. <laughs> what is up with that, Jeff? Yeah, stately Gorham Manor is a bit warm today. <laughs> Back to pass again is Adams looking down the middle. Nice oh. catch and nothing but green. Looks like it'll be another score unless he can get caught from behind. Nice tackle at the end zone, but it will be just shy. Gio Visco coming up with the score. Wow, what a great effort, though, defensively to get him. I mean, he nearly got him at the – but the catch itself, that was Odell Beckham Jr. style, one-handed catch. Great athleticism. 
Watch this catch. It looked like he had gum on his hand. This thing, oh, here it is. Watch there it, it is. One-handed. Right. Nicely done. Wow, great athleticism produced there by Gio Visco. Comes up with a score. And you got to give credit to Will Davis. Davis made the effort to try to catch him from behind, just ran out of territory to make that touchdown saving tackle. If he had one more yard, he might have got him. Yeah, he was right there. It was right on the line. So another two-point conversion attempt here for the Cubs of Riverside. Adams on the count. Again on the keeper, moving to his left. Nothing but green. Boy, completely untouched. That is twice for both of his point after conversions. The two pointers have gone virtually untouched. And now that'll make it a 24 to nothing. Let's take a second look at the catch and the touchdown here. Visco. And here's the point after conversion. Boy, for being such a big size, 6'1, 200 pounds. Adams is quite elusive as a runner. I'll tell you what, he is going to be. I think he's going to play on Saturdays here coming I'm, up. You know, I, I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised in the least bit. Yeah, Coach Gal, uh, Coach Adams played at Gallaudet University. He's been, you know, he's, he's been coaching here for five years as the head coach, but he's been a teacher on campus for 25 years. That is quite a commitment. He went to school here. He, uh, His entire family, uh, he was telling me, went to school here. He's been playing football since he was 10 years old. He said he put on the pads first at 10, so football is in his blood. And it's obviously showing from his coaching duties. You know, here you have two consecutive seasons where he's had very successful programs here. And it's looking, you know, another positive season so far as they're sitting with a 24 to nothing lead early here in the first. Kind of slowing things up as your special teams going to spread out, making sure that everybody is in place. I think this is going to cause the Dragons to think about trying to throw that football maybe just a little bit more because, and we see the squib kick, and it looks like it'll go in possession of the Dragons. So. You know, I was going to tell you, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Kurt Warner came to one of the games here at CSDR. I heard that. I heard that. And came and gave a powerful speech to inspire the boys and the community after the game. How cool is it? I mean, we were talking, you know, Kurt Warner got his start playing arena football. And it really, really, uh, the story hit really, really well with him. And he said, hey, I'm going to come out and watch CSDR play. And. Man, how cool is it to have a Hall of Famer come out and speak to your guys? Yeah, the Cubs have gained really national notoriety. I mean, this is a team that got followed later on in the season in the 21 campaign where they were having this ride into the CIF playoffs. Give is to number 18, rolling out to the left side, pick up about three to four on the carry. But national notoriety for this team, they wound up going on the Kelly Clarkson show where they received a very generous donation to help spruce up the field here. I love Kelly Clarkson. Yes, and they also wound up going to the Super Bowl, winding up being part of the coin toss, which is great. I know they've received a lot of different interviews from ESPN, Fox Sports, and a variety of different media outlets. In fact, I know Coach Adams was telling you that he tries to limit those interviews because they can get a little distracted sometimes. Yeah, last, last year was just a complete... I mean, it had to be a circus. I mean, they I don't think they understood the importance of what they were doing. I mean, it's, it's, it is so inspirational. Uh, it was such an inspirational story that these young men uh, did so much last year. And, you know, people were talking, hey, we're going to make movies about it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I'll tell you what, unfinished business is what Coach Adams said. And he said, well, let's put last year in the past. We're going we're gonna to do our best this year to bring that championship home. That is the mindset, and you know they're doing everything possible to get themselves in that position. And that last play, Davis was your ball carrier. It comes up with nothing, so it'll make it a third down scenario, about third and seven, we'll call it. So another situation where the Dragons are kind of backed up, man going in motion, and the keeper, Lambert, scrambling for his life. Still elusive, finally cut down. Looks like it'll be a loss of about five yards on the play. Credit Caden Adams, the other son here in the equation, making the stop. Let's head down uh, to the sideline to Pep Fernandez. Pep, what you got for us? 
uh, we got an awesome interview. I heard you talking about the great following for the Cubs last season and, of course, uh, movie productions. Well, Disney obviously caught wind of the Cubs and what a magical season it was last year. Uh, John Masseur here, and uh, John is a filmmaker and involved with the Disney production. So, John, what exactly is your role as uh, Disney tries to bring this story to uh, the rest of the world about CSDR? If you want the microphone over here with the interpreter. Oh, yeah. So, so, um, so Disney, I'll be co-producing with them, and I'll be doing some consulting with them, with the writing team. I'll be consulting with them specifically to the culture here at CSDR and to cult deaf culture in general and community culture. That is my specialty. And John, how exciting is that as the rest of the world gets to know a little bit more about the city of Riverside, about this school, about the football program? Uh, because again, last year, the Cubs really burst onto the scene and now even more people will get to know about them. Definitely, definitely. One thing I've noticed that as soon as the football season was over, you know, because I work out in LA and people out there were saying, hey, What's going on with the deaf school out in Riverside? What's going on with that football team? Wow. And nobody ever brought that up before. And their attitudes with me was even different. You know, because football just literally spread throughout the world. I have friends in Europe who heard about it. So it's just powerful. It's, it's amazing. And the, the program itself, too. And, John, real quick before the game resumes, um, obviously the Cubs are very, very good now. They weren't so good when you played here uh, for three seasons at CSDR, correct? <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. The three years that I played football here, I'd have to think over those three years, I believe we collect collectively won four games. The rest were all losses. And so, to be honest, the city of Riverside you know, just never really had a lot of winning seasons. We were known as a losing team. Every game that came here, they knew, okay, that's a win. You know, they could just mark that in the books. But now look what's happening. The whole culture has changed here because of that, and that's something I, I have a lot of pride in. So Riverside, wow, this is a big deal. Yeah, the Cubs are definitely winners now, and maybe a championship season. JR, Jeff, back to you guys. Great. Thank you, Pet, for that information. We're going to get a toss right out of the bat. Looks like it'll be a first down pickup here as the grab is made by Cody Metzner. So once again, tossing it from Trevin Adams, the Cubs are really moving the sticks here. But just like that, Jeff, it's an, it's an inspirational story about the Cubs here and that it's gaining even international notoriety, not just national notoriety. Uh, just how inspirational these youngsters have been out the, the past couple of seasons here. But, but you know what I was thinking about just now when he was saying it was movies? Who's going to play us in the movies? But that's true. I mean, th that's the most important thing is who's going to play J.R. Ibarra? Who uh -huh. would play J.R. Ibarra? I'm going to have to think hard on that one. I know who would play me. Who's that? Brad Pitt. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Wow, what a great story. Like course, you said, of inspiration. I I'm thinking, I, I know I've been told maybe Jimmy Smith. I don't know. You could be J oh, Jimmy Smith. Yeah, Jimmy Smith. He hasn't been working lately. No. He's we yet. need to get him reemployed. Toss out. Down into the flat, looks like we have nothing but green, and in for the score will be Gio Visco for his second consecutive touchdown here for the Cubs of Riverside. Nice toss into the flat, and is there a flag on the field? Because it looks like people are coming back here. Did not see a flag produced. You know, and last year being at that game, the, the CIF championship game, over 3,000 people filled in to the stadium over at John W. North. I have never seen the city of Riverside and, and the community embrace a, a team, a program, as such as they did last year over at North in that CIF championship. So a holding call is going to nullify the catch and the touchdown, so this will bring this one back. So, unfortunately, Visco will not come up with another one on the stat sheet here. But, nonetheless, good field position for the Cubs of Riverside. Clock closely hitting that three-minute mark. Keeper by Adams. Got a little bit of green. We'll pick up. 
the first down after a gain of close to 15 yards on the carry. You know, and last season that, you know, the only thing that stopped, remember, they beat Avalon in Catalina to go to the championship. They were they were down in that third quarter. They ended up winning 62-51, but they lost in the championship to a, a phenomenal team, Faith Baptist, who has won numerous CIF championships. They lost 74-22. And I'll tell you what, that was that was a tough a tough pill to swallow for a team that was 12 and 0 going into the game. And like like Coach Adam says, they lived in the weight room in the off season and did everything they can to get back to the same position they were last year. First and ten here for the Cubs inside of the red zone. Clock is rolling here inside of almost two and a half to play. Looking to his left, Visco now with a catch and the touchdown. Nice toss by Adams. Visco once again finally coming up with the grab, and now he has his second consecutive score of the afternoon. Yeah, they got to make sure they get, got him his redeem himself after that, that penalty. Absolutely. So it'll be another two-point conversion attempt here for the Cubs of Riverside. And Trevin Adams just keeps racking things up coming into this ball game. He had 16 touchdowns by, uh, by passing. So that'll add a couple more into his stat sheet. Only three interceptions so far in the 22 campaign. Adams looking to his left. Once again to Visco who gets the grab and the two point conversion. So now it is 32 to nothing early here in the first. Let's take another look at this one, Jeff. And great fake and just a nice, perfect spot to hit him right in the hands. Nice grab. Very nice grab. Trevin Adams averages about 211 yards per game from the passing standpoint. So you know he's going to add a lot more into his stat sheet for that side here early in this first quarter of play. 32 to nothing. Boy, we knew there would be some points on the scoreboard. I just didn't think it would be this quick and early here, Jeff. This uh, what did they say in Star Wars? This uh, battle station is fully operational. <laughs> yeah, I think you can use that to safely use that analogy so far here for the Cubs of Riverside. This is a well-oiled machine. And Jeff, as you were saying, you know, last year when you look at some of the scores that they had, I see 68 to nothing. I see 64-22. I see 68 to nothing. I see 78 to 18. 84 to 12. Oh my gosh, <laughs> they they just had a magical season last year and uh, as we keep saying time and time again they just want to get back to that championship game one more time another shot especially for the seniors Trevin Adams is a senior along with Gonzalez and Jory Valencia those are kind of the three primary guys you'll see offensively here for the Cubs of Riverside yeah think of it this way last year in 13 games they scored 810 points and gave up only 293 so they they outscored their opponents by over 500 points oh my god that's that's <laughs> an unreal margin look at this uh touchdown or actually this will be the two-point conversion so we'll take another look at that but on the kickoff the cubs come up with a rock so the onside kick if you were or the squid kick they come up I've got possession I told, of I, it. I told you that they're going to do it every single time. It's an eight-man tradition is to kick the football uh, for onside kicks. When you have that kind of strength of uh, offensive coverage here, why not? Give yourselves the opportunity to potentially come up with a rock. Well, you know what I like about this team is their offense – is their defense is there <laughs> you know why why have to play defense when you're, you're outscoring your teams by 500 points you know very true i mean we've we've not seen a whole lot of the defensive squad here on the field so far here early in this first quarter of play it's the greatest show on it's not turf the greatest show on grass for gosh sakes rarely see that around high school nice toss off goes to Gonzalez looking for some daylight gets pushed out of bounds right at about the 21 yard line looks he'll looks like he'll get the first down so that'll move the chains now I've told this story before JR but you know when I was growing up here in Riverside I played little league baseball I played little league I played Catholic little league baseball and I also played flag football for the city and, and Catholic league and CSDR was part of the Catholic little league when I was a kid hmm. so we would play them in baseball and 
I, I kid you not. I, I always thought I was a big kid. We were playing against, I mean, fifth graders, and they looked like they were they were grown men, and they would pummel us. And I remember, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you right after this play, a great story. Adams tosses it out. Looks like it'll be another first down pickup with the reception. It'll be Cody Metzner. Well, you know, I was a pitcher, and I, I can hit the ball pretty well. And so I, I was up to plate, and their pitcher nailed me. Oh, I mean, really? Uh, he didn't just nail me. He threw it as hard as he could and hit me in the side. And I remember thinking, like, I looked down, and I looked over at him, and he smiled and laughed at me as I went over to first base. <laughs> and he did it again in the third inning. And I was like, oh, my gosh, why is he doing this to me? He didn't want to. He just said, I remember the coach said, they don't want, they don't want to pitch to you, so they're just going to hit you every time. <laughs> <laughs> they pummeled us, and then we played him in flag football. The same guy, and, and he—it was flag football, and he, he laid me out. And I remember him laughing at me. I said, "I don't want to play CSDR in anything anymore." I, I had to beg my parents when we'd come over here. I, I don't want to play. Well, you're such a big target; it's easy to hit you. Man, I was—I must have been kind of a jerk too, because I was—I <laughs> was—I was on the bullseye of that player and those guys. Cody but, Metzner on the carry he picks up about nine yards on the play. We used to say that they were older than they were, that just because we were getting killed. <laughs> if we, you know, if it would have been close, they would have been the same age. But they killed us. First and goal scenario. Excuse me, second and goal scenario. And Metzner on the carry will push it into the end zone for the score. So just like that, with the clock stopping at 1:25 here in the first, another six up on the scoreboard here for the Cubs of Riverside. Did you, did you say the first quarter? It's the first quarter still, Jeff. <laughs> Metzner looking for some daylight, just turns it upfield, hardly touched at all as he puts it right into the end zone. So once again, a familiar two-point conversion attempt. Metzner once again in the backfield, so they're kind of mixing things up from a running standpoint. Metzner off left tackle, in for the score. Another two-point conversion made. So they are perfect on two-point conversions tonight. They have not. They have not had a gaff yet. Not in the least bit. It is now 40 to nothing. Clock stopped at 125. So we're on pace for 160 points. You know. 160, uh, JR. You know, I, I I cannot recall a high school game with this many points by one team in a single quarter. So this this puts us in a unique uh, scenario if they keep up this kind of pace here, Jeff. Well, you know, the first game I ever did as a, as a somewhat of a broadcaster, I was doing PA announcing at the high school at Harupa Valley. And this was some uh, probably 20 years ago. And Bloomington, who was a just phenomenal. Oh, yes. Oh, they yes. were great. Right. They, they put up 108 points, and I thought that was the roughest game I had ever seen in my life. The score was 108 to 20. Yeah, the great Don Markham back in the day. That was one of the, the elite programs as far as scoring in the entire nation. You know, and, and the thing is, he, he was my high school football coach at Ramona High School. And, and the thing was, he would always tell us, I go, hey, coach, how come we only have like, you know, 18 guys on our team? Because we didn't have very big teams. Mm -hmm. We were very good. Yeah. And he said, well, you know, I, I like to score a lot of points. So if I have extra guys on the on the field, I mean, that, that means I have to play those guys. <laughs> and I said, well, what does that mean? He goes, I want to beat teams. And this was the great Don Markham, how he was. Yeah. I want to beat them as bad as I can. So teams would go, you need to play other guys. And he said, well, I don't have these other guys. i got to play with what I have. Mm -hmm. what, do you want me to not play hard? Yeah. And so he would beat teams by 100 points, and everybody would go crazy on Don Markham. <laughs> A classic gentleman. <laughs> Squib kick. Looks like the Dragons will grab this one and keep possession of it. Yeah, I was a basketball player, and he would always feed me. Because I was a thin kid. I was 6'7", you know, 190 pounds. And I was a quarterback, and they moved me to punter because he goes, There's, you're not going to throw the ball here. I'm not, you're going to hand off. And you can't lead the block because you're 190 pounds. <laughs> he would make me peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I'd have to go the first three periods of the day to get sandwiches from Coach Markham. Oh, really? And he would yell at me the entire time. <laughs> I'd be eating my sandwiches. He'd be screaming at me. You got to bulk up, Gorham. I'm like, I, I, I don't have any hair on my face yet, buddy. I'm not bulking up anywhere. It's just going right through me. First down and 10 scenario here for the Dragons of Florida. Really have a fairly deep hole to dig themselves out of here, Jeff. 
Got plenty of time. I mean, but they, they're going to dig it. I don't know if they can dig, dig out of this one. Yeah, this nice jump pass goes down. Did anybody catch that? Doesn't look like it. Incomplete pass here for the Dragons. Second down. I had a chance to walk around the facilities here today before the game. Man, what a great sw uh, swimming facility. It's a beautiful and, campus. And a brand new uh, gymnasium. Beautiful campus. And I heard through the grapevine that through all these donations that this football field is going to get renovated for next next season. They'll have a full-on stadium, and that's what they're calling for for the 23 season. So it'll be nice to have a, a full set of stands, a press box, if you will. Give is going to go up the middle. Gets tripped and ended up. Will Davis, once again, your ball carrier here for the Dragons of Florida. And it looks like he'll come close to a first down. Not quite. Yeah, it's going to be a couple of yards short. Yeah, the campus is quite beautiful here. They've done a tremendous job. This is a school that is run directly by the state of California. Founded way back in 1953. Currently serving about 400 plus students in K through 12. So it's not exclusively a high school, but it is a K through 12 type of setup here. So servicing all the students in the area who are hearing impaired and deaf. On the rollout it is number 18 who gets knocked out of bounds for the first down. We do have a penalty marker probably against the Cubs. But right now let's go down to the field with Pep Fernandez. Pep. Hey, JR and Jeff. You know, not only did the Florida school for the deaf and blind come out to Riverside to play a football game, they also played volleyball, and I'm happy to report that CSDR won this morning. Jada Zaremka was one of the star players in that match, had the game-winning kill to uh, secure that victory. Uh, Jada, what was it like this morning to get a win and kind of start off the homecoming festivities with a big win for the Cubs? Just so thrilled. It was so thrilling. You know, we won against Florida School for the Deaf and Blind, the third deaf team I've been able to play against this year. So it was really exciting. They are a really good team, but we were able to get the win. Now, did you also play the uh, Indiana school last week? We played Indiana, and now we're playing Florida School for the Deaf and Blind. We also played the Fremont School for the Deaf. And did you beat all those teams? Fremont, we won 3-0. And Florida, we beat 3-0. Indiana's a really good school. It was a hot, competitive game, but we did lose. So, big win today. Hopefully, it could be a sweep today if the football team wins behind us and two wins for the Cubs today against the Florida School. Me too, and I know they're going to get the win. And is Jada also the... Um, I want to wish them good luck as well. The good luck. Um, also the, is it the ASB vice president or something like that I heard? I am. I am the ASB vice president for my school here in Riverside. So an athlete and a scholar. Yeah, <laughs> I love to be involved with athletics and, and to be a leader on campus and be involved with what's going on in my school. All right, thank you, Jada. And CSDR going for the sweep today again. One in volleyball this morning, trying to double up here in football. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Pep. Give right up the middle here for the Dragons of Florida. They had the chains moved by virtue of the fact that in addition to a first down that they achieved, it was a late hit that gave them an additional 15 yards. So now that puts them in some pretty solid territory right now as the ball is squared up right at about the 12-yard line. Clock rolling with about five seconds remaining here in the first half. Give goes right up the middle. Going to pick up about five on the carry, just shy of the first down marker. But that will bring to a close the first quarter of play. So in one quarter, we've seen 40 points put up by the Cubs of Riverside and very efficient it's not a surprising factor of what we've seen in the past from this team here, Jeff. No, I mean, if you were looking at the stat sheet, they have been perfect. I mean, they've been perfect on their their extra point attempts. They have been perfect uh, striking the ball down the field on the pass. They've run well. Just a great game. But I'll tell you what, if we're going to bring it out Florida, I really think we should do this. We should we should every year just mark off a, a win. So if we win today, CSDR marks off Florida. They've already beat Indiana, right? Correct. They, so, they won last week. Okay, let's play all – 50 states. I, I want to even I, let's go to America, Samoa. Let's go to Puerto Rico. <laughs> let's dominate the entire uh, country here. The states and the provinces that, All that of encompass them. I, I the United want, States. Yes. Yeah. Let's let's take CSDR on a tour. They play. Let's say we play three to four uh, states a year. 
You, you know, it's pretty cool, and I, and I realize that, that, you know, the logistics in bringing a football team out, even though it's oh. a, a small squad along with the volleyball team they brought, that's, that's a lot of work to have to plan for. I'm sure there was months in the planning I sure to try so. to make that a reality. I hope they didn't drive out here. That would have oh, been horrible. Man, that would have been pretty nasty. But, yeah, flying out here, you know, you got to fly out all the pads. you got to yeah. fly out all the equipment. Yeah, it's, and, oh. it's a logistic nightmare. I mean, you think about what happens with the pros and the and the – Division one colleges, but even at the high school level with a small squad like this for eight man football, this is a lot of work to get these kids out here. So you got to give Florida a lot of uh, props and kudos for coming out all the way across the country here to California to play this contest. Yeah, it's very cool. I, I like I said, playing Indiana, playing Florida, let's play them all. Why not all fifty states? And beat the team up north and fourth down. And it looks like they're going to get stacked up and shy of making the first down. So another turnover on downs here for the Cubs, who will now go on a first down and 10 situation, starting off the second quarter of play. I'd love to see, and I, and I mean this sincerely, I think this eight-man football team is comparable to the top-tier local high schools that we've seen. If Hey, you put three more guys in the field, I'd put them against – anybody in the city of Riverside right they, now. They could handle themselves, definitely. They, they are very efficient offensively as, as we've seen so far. They've obviously been doing things pretty well defensively other than a couple of penalties that have uh, tripped them up just a bit. As they now go first down and 10 as we get their first series offensively here for the second quarter play. The Cubs of Riverside currently leading this one 40 to nothing. So let's see what uh, they dial up here from an offensive standpoint. Adams calling signals through hand signals. Looking to pass. Looking long again. Pass balling incomplete. Intended. Looks like Gio Visco once again was the intended receiver here for the Cubs of Riverside. What a great arm from the quarterback there. I, I want to add three more players, and then I want them to play Norta Vista. And beat Ken Batdorf like a drum. <laughs> My arch enemy. I want CSDR. Let's let's make it happen. Could we have an exhibition game sometime down the road? Yeah, I mean, just know, a thought. Or, you know, or a just scrimmage. a thought. A scrimmage yeah. game sometime in the summer, maybe. I, yeah. It'd be kind of worth coming out with the cameras and taking a look at something like that. Second down and 10 here for the Cubs. Looking long again. Nice spiral just out of the reach. Pretty well significantly past Jory. Valencia, who was the intended receiver on that play. So Adams is uh, still trying to make things happen offensively here. Boy, they're going over the top, going for the deep ball. Third and long, third and ten to be specific, as we'll take a – yeah, I thought we were going to take a second look at that. Valencia, once again, one of the leading receivers here for the Cubs of Riverside. Adams, once again, giving signals to his troops. On a third down, back to pass, going to scramble out of the pocket, has a little bit of daylight, has one man to loot, picks up the first down, still on his feet, gets by another couple of defenders and finds it, finally brings it down to about midfield. No, still remains on his feet. No, it is finally whistled dead. I guess his knee was down at one point, but it kind of shows you the strength of Adams able to fight his way as we'll take another look at this as he fights. I don't know. If I don't think he was down. They whistled it, but he was not. His knee was not down. No, the ball hit the floor. He just picked it up and ran with it. So it looks like the ball will be spotted right at about midfield here. But it'll be a first down and ten scenario. And once again for Trevin Adams, he makes uh, lemonade out of uh, a lemony situation here. He just kept going. So the Cubs grabbing the signals from the sidelines from head coach Keith Adams. You'll never see them huddle. No, I love the no huddle. I don't know if Florida likes the no huddle because they're down 40 to nothing. But Adams going to step back, looking to his left, dumps it off. Catch is made. And another first down pickup with the Reception being made by Cody Metzner. Metzner being a very effective player so far in this first half of play, and that will move the chains once again here for Riverside. Yeah, Metzner's been a beast. 
Metzner listed as a running back, linebacker, a senior 5'10", 165 pounds. Yeah, I really enjoyed talking to Coach Adams at the uh, on the coach's perspective this week. And I was telling uh, Pep Fernandez, I think the last night, I said, man, I wish I could really t like talk to the guy by myself. I'd love to have a soda pop with him and, and pick his brain. Back to pass. Catch looks like it is dropped. And Coach Adams angry. Born and complete. Adams. Looks furious on the sideline. Yeah, boy, he's he's making his uh, displeasure well known to his but players see, there. Yeah, I would love to hang out with him and, and have a pop, but the thing is I'd have to bring an interpreter with me. And I like to use a lot of colorful metaphors <laughs> that I don't know if it would be. <laughs> if we're hanging out talking coach talk. You know, the, this actually maybe gives a bit of inspiration to folks such as you and I to, oh. to pick up American Sign Language and, and do our part to uh, to communicate with this uh, community here in Riverside that is quite unique, a school that's been here for quite a long time, essentially almost 70 years now. We had a lady last year on the broadcast that was part of the first class wow. of CSDR. Adams on the keeper. Remains on his feet. Gets by a defender. Still on his feet. Finally gets pulled down, but not until he brings up a first down here for the Cubs of Riverside. Takes the ball inside of the 10. As we'll take another look at this. Just not effective tackling by the Dragons. They finally just kind of spin him out of bounds, but that'll be a first down scenario here for the Cubs. And talking about that, that does... Bring, make you want to learn sign language. It does. You know, it really is inspirational, if you will. Do you, do you know what stops me from learning? What's that? I'm a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> My wife tells me all the time, Jeff, you're a dummy. So I don't know if, I, I mean, honestly, it would be fantastic to learn. I know if yeah, Pat Fernandez, absolutely. His, his daughter uh, is taking a crash course in sign language, and it would be f something fantastic. And, you know, being a teacher myself, I'd love to talk with more students. Adams on the strike, and it is a touchdown here for the Cubs at Riverside. So this is homecoming week here on the campus of CSDR. It looks like there's uh, every week's homecoming from what we've covered here for Riverside TV. Oh, I love I love covering covering the Cubs. On the reception was number 15, Darius Zeremb Zerembka. Zeremka, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Sounds good to me. I'll, I'll take it. We'll call him uh, Darius Z. We'll call him DZ just for short. But how cool is it that the city of Riverside, you know, what we had, we, we really do support uh, CSDR here. And, Absolutely. And all of our broadcasts are, yeah. are uh, you know, they have the, what's it called down there at the bottom? The closed captioning. The closed captioning. DZ comes up with the two points here, so Darius – not only scores the touchdown, but gets the two-point conversion. So, once again, the Cubs are perfect in that two-point conversion attempt. Boy, they are phenomenal offensively. Defensively, yeah, yeah all of the programming and all of the city of Riverside is closed captioning. And I don't know too many other uh, cities or communities that – do do as such. Yeah, absolutely. It is it is a big commitment to do that te technically. It, there is a definite cost involved to make things happen, but that is in efforts to serve our hearing impaired community here in the city of Riverside and really throughout the nation. For those of, for those who might be viewing in, I'm sure we may have some viewers here from Florida take, taking a look at us this afternoon. The Floridians are probably angry at me because I was talking. To, you know, I'm you're gonna, talking smack about the Floridians. I, I want to dominate Don't the do that, entire please. world of football here <laughs> one state at a time that's what it should be that one state at a time that should be on a t-shirt and then have all 50 states as you as you win the state and just and have a little check off box yes exactly at each, at each state i know there's another school up in alameda i think it is yeah there is a northern california school for the deaf as well when are we going to beat the heck out of them i don't know we'll have to put them on the schedule <laughs> If they have a football game. Oh, I am all in on CSDR right now. 
you are on the bandwagon. Of course, you've been on the bandwagon for quite a few years now. Though. Oh, I, like I said, I used to love coming here as a kid. My dad would bring me and my brother, and we would just sit and watch games. There's an actual kickoff, Jeff. Can Holy you believe shit. that? Felix Gonzalez kicked it away. Davis on the run back, has a little bit of daylight, finally pushed out of bounds. <laughs> but that was a surprise. That's the first kickoff yeah, we've seen, essentially. That was, yeah, that was, other than the kickoff from Florida to start, that was the, the first time we've seen uh, Riverside do that. That's pretty impressive. And Devis with a pretty nice run back, so this will give some fairly respectable uh, field position here for the Dragons to start off with a first down and 10. Got quite a bit of a deficit to make up, though. 48 to nothing at 9-16 here in the second quarter play. Great to have you along with us here on Riverside TV. J.R. Ebar along with Jeff Gorham. Pet Fernandez on the sideline bringing us some of the insights of what's happening around the campus here. Got our guy Nick Rice as well. Nick will Rice be. will be joining us, too, because uh, Pep is such a busy guy. He's going to have to leave us around halftime to go off to his other duties. He's an MC. He's going to be the MC at the uh, Canyon Springs Inaugural Hall of Fame. Wow. That is impressive. Pep Fernandez is a very strong voice of Inland Empire Sports here around Riverside and San Bernardino counties. First down and 10 here for the Dragons of Florida. And a give right up the middle. Looks like it'll go nowhere. Nice stop on the play by David Figueroa. Once again, our mystery player number 18. 18's getting a lot of... Getting a lot of touches. It's it just unfortunately we don't have a name no. to go with a number, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess stacked up right off the bat there along the line of scrimmage. I will run over at halftime and ask 18, what is your name? Looks like Alfredo Baltazar was also in on the tackle and makes the initial hit. Actually winds up being a loss of a yard here for the Dragons. So second and 11. Clock rolling at 834. Give right up the middle once again. Maybe a pickup of two on the carry by our mystery guy. 18. So it'll be a third and long scenario. Actually, they're going to place the ball right at the original line of scrimmage. So it was only a pickup of one on the carry. Third and long, it's like the Dragons really need to try to generate something here with that big deficit of 48 points they're having to work with. Getting back in kind of that double wing scenario, 18 years, your ball carrier once again, maybe slices up the middle for a carry of about one, possibly two. And DZ, Darius Zaremka, making part of the stop there. Fourth down situation here for the Dragons. Looks like they'll bring in the punting squad for this one. No reason to try to chance this when you're losing by such a significant score here in the in the first half of play. And given, and given uh, Riverside great field position. You know, both teams in the red, it, it, uh, the Dragons almost look like Nebraska right now with that red and white color scheme. Pretty decent kick. Davis. Gonzalez fields the football, looking for some daylight to his right. Has some blocking ahead of him. Cuts it up and is finally stacked up just beyond midfield. And that's where the Cubs will operate with some very respectable field position here offensively. You know, I'm, I am kind of curious. I'm going to reach out to Pep Fernandez. I want to ask. How they bring it, how they send in the plays, if both teams are uh, hearing impaired. I had that that thought. I had that thought. I would love to know that question because obviously both are dealing with American Sign Language. How do you disguise your play calling? Yeah, maybe we can have you Pat know, Fernandez look that up for us. I'm going to send him a, a message. Obviously, because California School for the Deaf of Riverside, they play teams that are not deaf and hearing impaired. They so. play just kind of regular high schools that have no idea what's being said on the sideline with the sign language. But when you have two teams that are deaf and hearing impaired, uh, is there a situation where, where uh, signals can be stolen? Looks like we have a timeout down on the field here. I don't think head coach Keith Adams liked what he saw on the offensive setup, and he'll take a timeout. Let's see if our guy, Pet Fernandez, can uh, get 
get that information. I'm really curious because, they, like I said, they both speak American Sign Language. Right. And how do you send in a play? I mean, I would imagine you with would have no to, huddles. Yeah, you'd have to disguise it somehow. I, you know, it, it, obviously the other team can pick up what you're saying from a, a sign language standpoint, but there has to be a way of kind of disguising what your what your intentions are. You know, in a lot of college and in some high schools, they hold up big signs with yes. di- various faces. Right. I re- in fact, I remember uh, Heritage High School, Coach Broach used to hold up a, a giant head of Pep Fernandez <laughs> <laughs> on the sideline. It was a Pep Fernandez play. That is hysterical. Still pretty warm out, a little bit of breeze kicking up here from the western side. It's about 94 degrees here in sunny Southern California. It's kind of your typical September afternoon here for Southern California. So it's a first down and 10 for the Cubs. Adams going to look to his left, dumps it off almost immediately. It is caught and taken out of bounds, and it is once again Cody Metzner making the reception here for Riverside. I have a great, great story. In fact, the head football coach, and I'm going to look it up here uh, at halftime, uh, there was a longtime football coach, innovative football coach here at CSVR, and the huddle was designed in football by this coach at CSVR. Wow. And I'll explain to you uh, why is they would send in, the huddles were, were created so that they would send in a play and they would do their American Sign Language. Mm-hmm. That was to shield the other team huh. and so, or, or shield everybody that right, knew. From so the huddles were originated at CSDR by their head coach. And I do know this from last year. He is in the uh, Hall of Fame, the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame, and I'll get his name, a big-time coach in CIF and nationally for his innovations. Just like that, it is Adams striking to Gonzalez for the score. Out to my friend Jerry Hurley, who is the president of the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame. I'm sure he will know, and I will have that info shortly. You know, it's, it's quite uh, interesting when you think about all the different teams that comprise Riverside City Sports, from the different colleges to the many different high schools. There has been such a significant contribution, not just football-wise, but when you think about the hardwood and you think about the baseball diamond, there's a, a lot to come out of this great city. Rolling out to his right, dumps it off, and catch is made. Another two-point conversion made. Seems like what the Cubs do every time they toss to somebody for a touchdown, they toss to that same receiver. There you see the touchdown catch made by Gonzalez as he's drug down right at the goal line. And here's the two-point conversion attempt that once again is successful. So it seems like Adams likes to strike that same receiver as Gonzalez will come up with a catch and the two-point conversion, making it a 56 to nothing contest right now in favor of the Cubs of Riverside with 548 remaining in the first half. So right now, if we were to double, it would be 112. And I believe after halftime, the clock will be running. I, I did go down and talk to the White Hat. Okay. And he says that they're gonna, they decided to play CIF rules. Okay. So, and they said if there was a, 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 a score. A certain level of score. Then they will run the clock. Yeah, you got to believe at this point that will be enacted. So, until further notice, it looks like the clock will run and stop as play continues on here. So, Now, once again, the Dragons will be on the receiving end of this kickoff. Let's see if the Cubs come up with another kick here, which kind of surprised us last time out. Felix Gonzalez doing several different duties. In fact, when you look on the roster, they just have him listed as athlete. They don't have a specific position. He's just Just, just ATH. Just athlete. That's it. Nice kick by Gonzalez. Davis will grab it for the run back. He's looking towards the middle of the field, gets turned around and brought down. And it looks like the stop made by DZ is one of the defenders there. And that football coach who was here at CSDR for a number of years and is in the uh, California and the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame is Pete Lanzi. Wow. A significant contributor. Yeah, 
Paul Hubbard was a quarterback at Gallaudet University, but played for Pete Lanzi, and Pete Lanzi, who's in many uh, Hall of Fames, he's in the Hall of Fame at Youngstown State University here in the city of Riverside. He's also in the NFL uh, in their football archives as one of the innovators for what we know now as professional NFL football. First down and 10, carry is made by our number 18. Also a flag on the play that looks like it's going to be a face mask. Yes, yeah, somebody inadvertently grabbed the mask of our of our buddy number 18 here. So that'll add some more yardage on the carry and bring up a first down continuance here for the Dragons of Florida. So it's, if, if anything, it's been penalties that have kind of hampered a, a complete football game here for the Cubs of Riverside in spite of the fact that they are leading by 56 to nothing. Penalties have just kind of hampered them just a bit and have added some additional yardage to some of these. I do, I do have some great, uh, a great little story I just found here on Pete Lanzi. 18-year ball carrier. Pete L Get. Pick up of about six on the carry. Actually, we'll call it seven on the carry, so it'll make it a... Uh, Second down, and we'll call it a second down and fourth scenario here for the Dragons of Florida. So Pete Lanzi was at CSDR from 1963 to 1986. Wow. He passed away oh in 1990. Goodness. What a run. But he had, was a high school football coach in 1949, and he, he is proudly claims to have been involved in the first game in which penalty flags were thrown and later of being the first coach to go on to the field to be in the team huddle during a timeout. So he was the first coach wow. to ever. But it took the Raiders getting blown out by the Seattle at the Seattle Kingdom November 3rd for him to get finally get some re recognition. 24 years of those, 24 of those coaching years included this, his final season at California School for the Deaf. Wow. Sincere Vasquez comes up with the reception by a nice toss put out by Lambert. So it's a first and 10 scenario right at about the 22 yard line. So now the Dragons are getting themselves close to that red zone here. They definitely could use some points on the scoreboard before we hit into halftime. No, there's not 54 minutes remaining in the second quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Lambert getting chased out of the pocket. Looks like it'll be a loss of about three yards. Don't think that was intentional. There you see 346 remaining in the second quarter of play. Here at CSDR was the first time audibles were ever used in football. Really? Because they could they could communicate. They could do it by sign language. By sign language. Wow. So then it transferred over to the speaking world. So the influence done here at this field at this campus right here just spreads far and wide to the whole uh, the whole world of football he became famous overnight because of the audible he was able to the players were able to work together using audibles without ever talking wow clock is running here at 305 before we head into the locker room, we'll have a chat with Pat Fernandez. I think he has both athletic directors who will be joining us during the halftime hour. And I will say this: the last thing uh, I just heard, I just heard from the great John Corona, who uh, is on the board of the Hall of Fame of Riverside, longtime coach at King High School, said Pete Lanzi is the coach of the year every year. Yes, that that is a great way to put it. 18 on your carry. Looks like he'll pick up about two yards. Let's head down to the field for Pep Fernandez. Pep. Hey, guys. You know, an interesting wrinkle here to this football game. Obviously, right now, the, the Dragons are only worried about competing in this game against CSDR. But they've got much bigger things to focus on once they leave here because once they return to Florida, they're bracing for Hurricane Ian. And it sounds like we have Assistant Athletic Director Billy Lang from the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind to tell us more about it. But it sounds like they'll be evacuated upon their return. So, wow. Billy, what can you tell us about uh, your trip back home and what that means once you guys land in Orlando? So we do have a plan in place. We're prepared to, when we land, we're going to go to St. Augustine to the Florida Deaf School Blind and all of our students from school will not be returning. They've already left school and the campus on Monday 
we'll have our cheerleaders and our football players who are arriving get picked up. The volleyball team will actually wait and see just how bad it is. And then they're actually going to be flying to Indiana to compete in a tournament. Oh. And if it's too bad, then they're going to be evacuated as well and go home. So we're hoping that's our plan. But locally, anyone who rides the bus to school will still be attending on Monday. All right, that's Billy Lang, the Assistant Athletic Director for the Florida School for the Deaf and Blind, and giving us an update on their travel plans with Hurricane Ian uh, making its way to the state of Florida. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Pep. That is incredible news to talk about. We'll, we'll chat about that in just a bit, Jeff. But as, as Pep was talking, there was a touchdown made here by the Dragons. They're going to try a two-point conversion. Our good buddy, number 18, goes in for the score. But it was a nice toss that was over to number 17, Jamorian Scott, who comes up with a reception. He's a freshman, six foot, 163, makes the grab. Take a second look at the touchdown play here by Florida. Great throw right over the shoulder. Nicely done. There was a flag on that play, but it was a pass interference call that went against the Cubs of Riverside. We'll see the two-point conversion attempt here that is made and is successful. So this is a, a nice bright spot here for the Dragons. They get themselves on the scoreboard before we head into the locker room. But, boy, just thinking about that, football now kind of becomes secondary when you think about the fact that you have a hurricane bearing down on your home state here just before you're headed back uh, after this football contest. Yeah, that's got to be tough. And thinking about it, I mean, we're in, we're in Southern California. All we have to worry about is a heat wave and if it ever rains here. <laughs> so our hearts and you know, thoughts I, go Oh, out. man, I, absolutely. For those of you who are in Florida who are watching it, being our heartfelt thoughts and prayers go out to you as you have to contend with that uh, uh, storm that's bearing down on the state, which apparently is very strong. I know it's hit parts of the Caribbean so far with a pretty full force of a, of a Category 4, which is very strong for uh, for a storm. So uh, our prayer is going out to the state of Florida, and let's hope the best for these uh, players. Really, uh, at this point, football comes uh, a little bit on the secondary side, but nonetheless, it's great to see that they, they got themselves on the scoreboard before we head into the locker room here. Well, hey, if, if they need a place to stay, they can stay at State Ligora Manor. The only problem is I have no air conditioning today. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're kind of used to that, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, so aren't they kind of used to the heat? Yeah, I don't know. I got lots of cold beverages. Well, I there you go. I have every flavored water and I, soda. I'll make a contribution. I'll, I'll, I'll make a Costco run for you guys, and, right. and we'll grab a, a case of waters and Coca-Colas. and uh, They can hang, have, out, hang out with the Gorham boys and uh, in my house, and we'll watch, <laughs> we'll watch movies all night. There you go. So there's a solution to every problem, folks. Right. I got a pool and a hot tub, we'll, too. We'll, so we'll, can, oh, there you go. Swim around all We'll have to take turns, probably, taking uh, swipes at the pool. Just get them all in there. <laughs> get the whole team in. Get them all. <laughs> Will Devis will be your kicker here, onside kick, as we normally see from these two squads. It is touched momentarily. Oh, we have a, some pushing and shoving going on, but it looks like the Cubs will come up with a rock. Clock is stopped. Close to that two-minute mark here for this second quarter of play. You know, there's not been a whole lot of hurricanes that hit Florida in the past year, so it's it's amazing that this time of the year they're having to deal with that particular situation again. So um, just one of those things, I guess, wherever you live regionally, you have to contend with something that uh, pops up through Mother Nature. Of course, we're still kind of waiting for the, the big one, as we call it, here in, in Southern California. First down and 10 for the Cubs. Yeah, I was uh, playing basketball up at UC Berkeley at the time. But that big earthquake hit. Oh, is that right? We were in practice, and the guys from wow. the, the guys from New York City, this is a great one. You know, I'm a Southern California guy, and we're in the middle of uh, shooting around in practice. We're all at different baskets yeah. at, at the gym at, at Cal, and all of a sudden, you know, everything starts shaking. The backboards are moving. A light falls and lands right in the middle of the floor. Wow. And I remember the guys on the East Coast who had never felt an earthquake. They they ran out of the gym and they refu <laughs> <laughs> refused to come back into the gym for about three days. <laughs> Coach had to threaten them with a, their scholarship. We need you to really? we need you to practice. 
Wow. The fear of God was thrown into those young men, and I just remember laughing, going, yeah, it was it was scary. Well, that? it was. You, you yeah. see the national attention achieved since it happened right during the World yeah. Series. So it that, that was that was quite an eye opener, and and for those of us who have been in a few quakes here in yes. Southern California, yes. it is something that is. Uh, uh, we we don't like to contend with it, but you kind of no. get used to it after a while. Yes. But, yeah, that was one of the, the most surreal moments. Adams looking long, intended for Gonzalez as your receiver. Devis on the coverage. Winds up going incomplete. Brings up second down here for the Cubs. I'm getting texts from all kinds of high school coaches saying how much they love watching this game. Our friend Chris Chaddock over at Indian Springs out in San nice. Bernardino. Nice. Uh, my, mar- my mortal arch enemy, Ken Batdorf, is watching <laughs> at home. Uh, Ken Mashinsky over at Ramona. They're hey all there, tuning Mush. In. Brad, glad to have both Kens. Gr- glad to have you along with us here on a Saturday uh, afternoon. I, what, I mean, what else is there to do? You want to be out mowing the lawn in 95 degrees? No. That's, I have to I have Got to be inside, sit back, and watch Riverside TV with a cold beverage. Yeah, I just make my kids mow. <laughs> Second down and 10. Adams looking long. Gonzalez tries to one-hand it once again. Devis on the pass coverage will wind up once again as an incomplete pass. Was that the same young man that caught the one-hander in the first? Yes, it is. It is. So he was trying to come up with that same acrobatic type oh. of catch, unfortunately just a little bit beyond his reach. You know, this is a pretty good-sized crowd here. You know, for, for being a very hot uh, afternoon here in Riverside. Yeah, like I said, 3,000 showed up at North last year. They, they The bleachers hold about 50, but there's 50 people, not 50,000. Well, correct. And, correct. and uh, <laughs> there's there are a lot of people here. Yeah, there is. Taking in the game. It's nice, it's nice to see this type of uh, enthusiasm by... The folks here in Riverside. Third down scenario. Adams once again just tosses it out to the flat, just out of the reach of his intended receiver, which is once again Felix Gonzalez. So that will bring up a fourth down scenario. Cubs normally do not punt, so you got to wonder, I, you know, with this type of lead, why not just give it another offensive play here? Of course. See if we can get some trickery. Felix Gonzalez came into this game 447 yards total on the season so far. Gets about 11, 111 per game. Has nine touchdowns with a long of 62 yards for a touchdown. So Gonzalez, one of the favorite targets here by Adams. Fourth down scenario. Keeper by Adams going out to his left, looking for some daylight. Gets grabbed. Looks like he is going to get past the first down marker and will make it a first down and move the chains here for the Cubs. Wow, what a great run. I mean, a great fake, and he just kept it himself, and he dove outside and then in and just took the took the brunt of the hits here. It was an intended running play for sure. It, it was not like yeah. he was chased out of the pocket. It was definitely a designed run by Adams, which once again, he is the leading ground gainer here coming into this contest. Having rushed for 434 yards on the season. Gets about almost six yards per carry. Has eight touchdowns from a running standpoint. Adams once again on the keeper. Has a bit of daylight, knocks over a couple of players, stays on his feet, will pick up another first down and moving the chain. I believe he used his, the arm that he was holding the ball with to shove guys out of the way. He is a brute, man. So just before we head into the locker room, it looks like the Cubs want to put up another six points on the scoreboard. Whistles and stoppage. I'm, I'm wondering what Coach Adams does at home when when these are his two sons were little little boys going to walk into their bedroom. I wonder if he took pillows or a, you know a, a tackling dummy and would try to hit, knock his kids down going to, to just going into the just bedroom just to get them used to doing this type of. Uh... See, that's I need to get in the, the mind of Coach <laughs> Adams. That's why I need to go to hang out with him, and have a couple pops. I want to hear the stories because his son, man, both his boys are tougher than nails. Absolutely. He needs to take my kids in to his house. I'll trade kids with him right now. So it looks like motion on the play. So they'll 
Bring it back five yards, and once again, Adams on the carry. Has some daylight, nothing but green inside for the score. So Trevin Adams puts another touchdown on his stat sheet. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to trade the Gorham boys for one week with Coach Adams. Give me his <laughs> Send sons. him over to the Adams yes. house. Kind the of, Adams kind family. Of t- kind of toughen him up a little bit. Yeah, the, I'm going to send the Gorms over to the Adams family. <laughs> and then the Adams family can come over, and then I'll, my wife can make them sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> She'll feed them well. But, man, I, I'm telling you, what a, what a great dad. That's a and, nice trade-off. That is a great trade-off. I want the, I want the, Adams, bo- the Adams boys at the Gorham house. And they can have the, the Gorham boys. I'm going to see if we can work that out. So timeout down on the field. Maybe that point did not score. Or let's see a, a second uh, look at this. Adams once again on the design keeper rolling out to his left. Great blocking on the play here by the Cubs as he scampers in for the score. Yep, I'm making a trade. Actually the apparent score, but it looks like that got called back. Timeout on the field here. I think it's for the referees. They got to be tired from running. Well, this is you know you got to figure this being in the heat and, and you're they running all, and they worked last night. Exactly, this team was out on the field last night, so this is a team that's still and and like I said, Ron Wade's 116 years old. He's well, he's, he's pretty good and, for his age. I mean, sir, he looks great for his age. He's he out does. here. He's out here less than you know 12 hours later. He's He's out reffing another game. Holding call goes against the Cubs. Once again, it's penalties that have been kind of the Achilles heel for Riverside. So that nullifies that last run for the touchdown. Ricardo Terrazzo is your ball carrier. Gets it kind of close to the original line of scrimmage. Actually, he's going to be shy quite significantly from the original line. Clock rolling with 25 seconds remaining before we hit ourselves into halftime. Flags once again flying. Thought I saw something up in the air. And it looks like the Cubs are just maybe content to run out the clock at this point. Well, maybe not. They're, do, they're doing a lot of furious signing uh, on the sidelines before the uh, clock goes to zero. And they do get the playoff, and a toss now by Adams, looking down the middle, incomplete. And that'll close out our first half of play. So as they head themselves into the locker room, it is a 56-8 to advantage here for the Cubs of Riverside. Boy, did they flex their muscles or what? California CSDR Riverside took care of business like none other, and it was from the get-go. I mean, it was score, score, extra point, extra point. I mean, they were darn near perfect. Other than a couple penalty calls, that was a perfect first half. Yeah, the penalties, again, were kind of the issue that the Cubs have had to deal with here throughout uh, this first half of play. But nonetheless, from an offensive standpoint, man, did they look real strong and not surprising at all. They are, they are living up to the billing so far here on Riverside TV. Yeah, and, and you have to play this kind of football because, you know, I, the score, you know, they're 56 to 6. But you're pl- this is a team that is, like we said, they're on a mission, and they have to play hard. And that's why, you know, the score is lopsided. It'll be running in the second half. But they want to get better because they are, their ultimate goal is that CIF championship. Well, I think we're going to head ourselves into the locker room. Once again, Riverside with that heat huge advantage although it looks like we're trying to uh, maybe grab an interview or two before we hit ourselves into halftime so Nick Rice is now down on the field with the duties on that Pitt Fernandez had to take off head off to his uh, hosting duties for the night so we'll hopefully have somebody to grab before they head into the locker room this afternoon but boy this this team uh, again flexing its muscles in the first half of play. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back and talk to Nick Rice momentarily. You're watching all the action here on Riverside TV. California leads the nation in railroad trespass related fatalities. In 2021, there were 243 trespass casualties in California. Trespassing is one of the most challenging safety issues plaguing California's railroad corridors. 
In Riverside County alone, there were 19 trespass-related casualties last year. But the positive news is those numbers have dropped over the years because of the efforts of California Operation Lifesaver and partnering agencies like RCTC and Metrolink. We can all help reduce trespass-related incidents even further if we never trespass on railroad property for any reason. That means no biking or walking near tracks. Railroad property is private property. The only safe place to cross train tracks is at a designated crossing. September is Rail Safety Month. So please do your part. And whenever you see tracks, always think train. And stay off, stay away, stay safe. It's time for a revolution. I'm Cheech Marine, and we're inviting you to reserve your spot for the inaugural showing of Cheech Collects. So get your tickets today. We're looking for you. support your favorite businesses with the Shop Riverside Community Card. With over 200 Riverside businesses giving exclusive discounts and offers to community card holders, there's something for everyone. Participating organizations sell these cards for only $15 each, with $10 going straight back to the organization itself, making the Shop Riverside Community Card a fantastic way to support your favorite local group. For more information about the Shop Riverside Community Card and to find participating businesses, please visit shopriversidenow.com. And don't forget to live local. Shop Riverside. High school sports are one of the things that make living in California so great. But sometimes the behavior in the stands can overshadow our achievements on the field. I love it when my parents show up for me. But being booed for missing a play could be crushing. And remember that refs are people too. They're trying their best to call a fair and correct game. Hey, and enough with all the f swearing. No one should feel insulted or ashamed because of their race, ethnicity, or gender. We should be able to hold our heads high after the match, win or lose. Well, it all started basically with my son, Joshua Unger. He's uh, severely autistic. Uh, he was aging out of the school district, and this was about when he was around 18, but the school district keeps you till you're 22. Uh, we're sitting at, at home one day, and we we're talking about, well, what are we gonna do once he actually is out of the school district? And uh, we thought about it really hard, and at that time, we were, we were doing some backyard gardening. And my son was very responsive to it. He enjoyed going out and planting the seeds and being in the soil and, uh, you know, harvesting the lettuce and going and, you know, getting the carrots and the onions. And, you know, he likes to cook, too. And we thought, well, hey, what if we actually had some property to where we could have, like, a, a small farm that sells vegetables and we can make a program where we can bring in others, a work program for people with these different disabilities. Ultimately, what we decided to do was just start looking in the, you know, the Inland Empire area for a piece of property that would work for that, and, you know, we found the green belt. We try to implement uh, as much organic material in the soil as possible. Um, we're not using any pesticides or herbicides. We, um, you know, like have barn owl boxes. We have little birds' nests that we're planting so that they'll eat some of the bugs. And we also encourage um, predator bugs, you know, like ladybugs. Our operation is at that point where we're turning a corner. You know, with the high tunnels going up, we're going to be planting tomatoes in there. There's a lot of little things to maintain with tomatoes. Uh, we're kind of transitioning from a point where we were just focused on this small little corner of the property, kind of educating me. <laughs> and then uh, now that we have some systems in place that I feel are successful, we're going to expand that across uh, the center part of the farm here. And we're going to be putting in um, a little farm stand that we can uh, sell some of these vegetables with, and that will provide additional tasks for the um, workers with disabilities to fulfill. 
One of the ways that we reach out to people is on Facebook, and it's Gable Farms. Uh, just Gable Farms, and you can search it in Riverside. And uh, that's an easy way to find us. My daughter had an issue at school where a st other student on her campus, specifically in her class, said some derogatory things about people of color, specifically black people. Although Riverside is a great place to live, it has shadows and it has corners where hate lives. As a result of that, my daughter was hurt that day and we needed to put a voice to it. A friend of mine, she reached out to me and she said, Rochelle, I can't sit by and know that this happened to Edison and not do something. We had a conversation about the racism that her daughter Edison had experienced at her school and how that felt to her. We felt like we needed to do something and to say something. And so we talked about uh, the representation of um, you know, black figures in Riverside and how there was a lack of representation. We talked about um, inclusion and respect and what that looked like. And we talked about creating an art piece. It was after the murals that we had had up on um, the Fox Performing Arts Center as well as the John Lewis mural at the Civil Rights Institute. And so when this concept came to us at the city of Riverside, it felt and a way that we could spark our artist community, because we are the city of arts and innovation, but it was also in, in an easy, beautiful way, a statement that we promote, um, we respect, and we want diversity, equity, and inclusion in all things we do. I myself am a mosaic artist, and so I talked to Rochelle about the possibility of us creating an art piece, and she loved that idea. And uh, soon Shay Tracy, who is um, also an educator, so we three are three teachers, uh, we started out on this endeavor to create this piece together and enlisted 14 artists to create the piece that you see here today. As at that time, there was so much happening um, in the culture, in the world, um, surrounding Black Lives Matter, and some of the protests in terms of the police brutality, brutality rather, that was happening that I just felt I needed to do something as a model to boys. Each individual person, they worked on their own sketch of the artist and they put the tiles together at their own home studio. And then towards the end, we collected the materials uh, in waves. And then we kind of just put it all together a few weeks before the reveal. I want them to feel uh, the love and intentionality that we put into the mural. I want it to uh, awaken a curiosity about all of the people who we included in the mural and to just get people to understand and to have more interest in black history and in these contributing members. As the city of arts and innovation, this was a really beautiful step uh, towards including art pieces that are public and that are representative of everyone. For the community, I hope that it shows that in being authentic and real and transparent and sharing our stories, great things can come out of it. Welcome to In the Vault, a program of the Museum of Riverside. Today I'm going to share a little bit about the museum's herbarium, which is a collection of plant specimens, and a herbarium can be either dry or wet specimens, but mostly dry specimens, and that's what we have quite a bit of. It began with the early curator of botanic collections, Edmund Yeager, who started collecting specimens in the Riverside and San Bernardino area in the 1920s. Many of these uh, specimens that he collected eventually wound up in our collection. But the real turning point was in 1949 when Charles and Wilhelmina Clark donated their collection, the Clark Herbarium, along with an endowment for the care of the collection and for botanical programs. And we've pulled out today 
just a couple of specimens, just a few specimens from the Clark Herbarium that are examples of Nevin's barberry, which is an endangered species in our area. And you actually can acquire cultivated specimens of this plant from nurseries, but in the few areas where it grows naturally, those uh, it's under threat and has been added to the endangered species list. Now, this is how herb dried herbarium specimens are stored and collected. A herbarium specimen is, a, is of little use to us unless it comes with its collection. Uh, was due to the success from last year, was that something that you're thinking about doing this year, adding out-of-state schools to your schedule? No, that's it. Yes, that's right. So we added three deaf schools, we, including Fremont, Indiana, and Florida. And homecoming is typically played against uh, Sherman Indian School or Fremont School for the Deaf. Um, now we're adding Texas last year, and this year we've got a team from back east, Florida. So who knows who it's going to be next year? Maybe an international team. That would really be incredible. But in terms of this program in general, it's also great for the community and everyone involved to see you guys rise and become the type of football program you are. Who do you thank and who is the most responsible for this sort of rise to fame, per se? It takes a community to raise us, it really. I'd say the community. We have some outstanding coaches. Specifically speaking, Keith Adams, our head coach, who's been working so hard. I've known him for a long time, and he's really helped develop this program again. It takes a whole school, the community, to make this happen. We're joined by Athletic Director Jeremiah Valencia. So, moving forward the rest of the year, uh, this is an incredible program. How do you guys stay on track? How do you guys keep winning ball games? The players? <laughs> it ain't, it's not us, it's the players. Actually, our offense... So when I became athletic director, we started our weightlifting program. We had one in place, but not as strong as it used to be. So before we only had five students showing up the first three weeks, and I see that those numbers growing, the belief, they see the wins, they see the culture changing. It's a winning culture, so we have our full team effort. Not only football players are doing it, now we have volleyball players, and the key is our offense, and that's gonna produce an outstanding season. I do hear from the grapevine, Jeremiah, about there might be some improvements to the stadium and to uh, the campus in general. Could you elaborate on that? The rumors are out there. <laughs> so we're supposed to be receiving $43 million, will we? I don't know. I hope so. We'll have a new football field. We're going to have a new track. We'll have a new soccer field, baseball field, softball, including lighting. And we'll have a press box for you to stand in. So we'll see. That would be incredible. Um, Jeremiah, not just with the football program, but we've been interviewing several folks from other sports. Uh, what can you say about your status and you know the successes of the remainder of the programs in the athletic department? We have a we had an outstanding girls basketball team. They made it to CIF into the Sweet 16, or the Elite Eight actually. They did great. Um, unfortunately, we lost five seniors, but I think this year should be a good one, too. Volleyball is looking pretty good. Uh, we started out 5-0. and We've had a few losses, but we have a really good team, and it's not only our football that's leading our athletics. Jeremiah, we're really, really glad of all the work you've done and this incredible program. We'll be here for a few more games this year. We're excited to see you guys compete. Yeah, come as often as you can. All right. Thank you very much, Nick Rice and Jeremiah Valencia. Guys, back to you. High school sports are one of the things that make living in California so great. Athletics builds character, teamwork, physical fitness, and shows what hard work can achieve. And some of us can even earn a college scholarship or qualify for the Olympics. But sometimes the behavior in the stands can overshadow our achievements on the field. I love it when my parents show up for me. But being booed for missing a play could be crushing. Parents who lose their minds when we don't score aren't helping. It can actually be super distracting. We should be able to hold our heads high after the match, win or lose. And remember that refs are people too. They're trying their best to call a fair and correct game.
even if you may not love the call. Seeing and hearing people, you know, belligerently be mean to you, it makes you not want to play anymore. It makes you just want to go sit on the sidelines and cry. Like, it's not fun. No one should feel insulted or ashamed because of their race, ethnicity, or gender. Hey, and enough with all the swearing. Anger has no place here. Thank you for being part of the change, and thank you for being there to lift us up. Welcome to In the Vault, a future of the Museum of Riverside. Today we're going to be talking about something fun, fun and games actually. The museum has quite a large collection of games dating back to the 19th century. A small selection of them will be featured in a new exhibition at Heritage House to open in early September of 2022. One of the games we're going to include is this one, which we discovered recently in our collection storage vault. We looked up its records and the records weren't particularly illuminating as to what it was and none of us recognized what it was. So while we did some research and pondered a bit, we still didn't turn up any information. But we were fortunate to have some good luck in the form of putting out some images and information about this piece to an international network of game collectors and game historians. Luckily, very quickly, we got an answer back from a collector in Germany who informed us that it's a whist counter, that's W-H-I-S-T, which is a card game related to bridge, which was played quite frequently in the 18th and 19th centuries. You may imagine gentlemen and gentlemen's clubs in London playing whist in the 19th century. It's as often referred to in novels, for instance, by Anthony Trollope. But today, the game is not played so very often. And there are other games in the collection that we'll be including that, again, are not played so very often. But that's a pity, because many of them are quite fun. And it's a great way to start conversation and spend some time with friends and family. Now, this piece as a whist counter, I would imagine that each of these pieces is used by the card playing team to keep track of their score in some way or to indicate. So for instance, this little item here indicates whether you're, presumably, whether your trump card is one or the other. So this is kind of a fancy way of keeping track of where things are in the course of play. It's a satin-lined velvet box, quite extravagant, and those researchers in Europe who helped us identify it indicated that they had not seen one, so quite so extravagant, you know, wrapped in velvet, lined in satin. So we're quite pleased to be able to have this. It's been in our collection since 1967, but again, it came as an unknown object from its donor. Again, the, the opportunity to, to use something as small as this um, to track, a, you know, the scoring of a card game is something, it's, it's something that we've lost, you know, that ability to just gather a few people around home, play a game, but that primarily is an opportunity for people to get together, spend some time together, have some fun, converse, and that I believe is something that's been lost in our time. You can see this and other games from the Museum of Riverside's collection at the exhibition coming up next fall. September 9th at Heritage House called It's Your Move, Games We Play. Hello. Welcome back, everybody, to the campus of the California School for the Deaf here in Riverside. J.R. Ibarra, along with Jeff Corn, bringing you all the action where the Riverside Cubs have a, a very healthy lead of 56-8 over the Dragons of Florida. Very uh, dominating first half performance here by the Cubs, Jeff. It just nothing really went wrong except some of those penalties that were kind of the, the nagging aspect of what happened uh, for the Cubs in that first half. Yeah, and I think uh, they'll probably look back at the film and say, you know, we're, we're winning this game 
handily, but against better teams, we can't have mental miscues. And I'm sure Coach has, has t- told his team there that at half. They have to play, you know, in these kind of games, you have to play smart. For one, you don't want guys to get hurt. Right. And two, you want to play fundamentally sound football so that when you do play in those tough games, uh, it will benefit you instead of hurt you later on. A little bit of a daylight there towards the end of the second half for Florida. They were able to get into the end zone with uh, some passing, if you will. Like I, I said earlier in the game, I, I was not expecting them to throw the ball a whole lot, but they wound up having to go to that aspect of uh, their offens- uh, offensive diagram to make things happen in order to try to keep up some sort of a pace here with the Cubs. Yeah, because the Cubs said, hey, if you're going to run, we're going to put 11 men in the box, Yeah, and we're going to make you beat us in the air. Uh huh. And that is to something that you know I think is the, to the strength of CSDR of Riverside and to the detriment of Florida. I just, I mean, it just, the Florida team came out all the way from, you know, 3,000 miles to play this game. And I'll tell you what, they can't hang their heads because they are playing, what I, I, and I am, I'm going to go out on a limb saying, the premier, the premier deaf program in the entire country. Yeah, no, I think there's no question about it. And not just in the country, but also one of the strongest eight-man teams in Southern California, Southern section, is right here with Riverside. Oh, I, I think they've circled that, you know, the date of the CIF championship. Yeah. They said, hey, they're, we're going to make it our own this year. I know they're trying to do that one game at a time, but that is truly in the back of the minds here of the Cubs and their coaching staff. Yeah, and and, and it it sounds cliche, but you have to dominate in order to be that it, to, to get to the level of success that they want to be at is that they have to play dominant football, mistake-free football, and they have to play their game. So I understand the score here, and we'll see a, probably a little bit of a difference here in the second half. Sure. But the main thing is to keep everybody healthy and to just continue to get better as the, as the season goes on. You know, when you think about it, I know some people, some people might say, oh, they're running up the score. But on the other aspect of it, you, you know, you're kind of giving notice to your opponents coming down the road that, hey, this is what we're capable of. This is what we can do against you. It almost acts as a, a mental challenge for the rest of their opponents as they head into league play. You know, it, it does. And it also, in fact, is, you know, if you have a team, and the most eight man's programs are very small in yes. size. Mm-hmm. Some, you know, sometimes you'll have 20 kids on a team, mm-hmm. and they, a lot of times they don't have JV or freshmen. So the, the kids that aren't playing are underclassmen. They're going to learn from these older guys. But you can't go out if, as a coach. And I've, I've coached for a long time. You only have, you know, say you have 16 guys that actually play. Mm-hmm. You can't say, hey, don't go out and play. you got to play hard no matter what. Right. And that's, I think, the scores get so lopsided in eight-man football because you are playing essentially your starters the whole game mm-hmm. because of the small, the, the small size of your team. Right. And we've seen that uh, essentially with Adams. I mean, he's been not afraid to throw that football and throw it long through a better part of the first half and coming up with some touchdowns and putting up uh, scoring on the scoreboard here. So it's just like they want to keep that well-oiled machine moving forward and not have any hiccups as they head themselves towards next week as league play will get started off and hopefully get themselves into a CIF playoff run. Yeah, they don't have and they don't have the luxury of having 65 guys, yeah. three different teams. Mm-hmm. You know, in a game like this, in a normal situation, right. you you bring up your JV and your freshman guys and you get them in this game to play. But it's not that the scenario just doesn't fit. And so, you know, if you're watching the game, you go, "Wow, they're 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 killing them." Yes. They are, but they ha- it's it's just the way it's going to happen because there aren't as many players on the field. Right. Just about ready to kick off here. The Cubs will be kicking away here to the Dragons. Great to have you along with us. As we haven't had confirmation yet, but we think there's going to be a running clock in the second half, which means according to the CIF rules, if there's a score that's just a little bit too one-sided to try to make things uh, hurried up uh, in terms of the time clock, We'll see if that will be enacted here. And it prevents injuries as well. Correct. In fact, there's discussion going on along the sideline there. I I believe that could be the discussion going on with the referees and the coaching staffs, especially with the coaching staff of the Dragons. A nice little interview with uh, Mr. Valencia. Halftime, Nick Rice talking to the athletic director at 
CSDR, they were allocated millions and millions of dollars to come in and refurbish all of the, put in a new stadium, right. put in a new soccer pitch, mm -hmm. uh, new baseball, softball field. And, uh, you know, I want to say it was like uh, close to $100 million, $70, $70 million. Yeah, that's quite a, quite a big price tag. And great to see the Valencia family. The AD here, his son is playing professional basketball over in Poland. Oh, uh, him. interesting. He was one of the best basketball players I have seen in the last 10 to 15 years in the city of Riverside. In fact, he played wow. in, a, in uh, the Inland in the Inland Sports All-Star Game, which Kawhi Leonard played in. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Mitchell, who is a, was a phenomenal All-American at San Diego State. But uh, Noah Valencia was our most valuable player of the game with NBA players. I mean, he was a phenomenal player. Wow. Now he's playing professional over in Poland. And now the boot being done by Felix Gonzalez will push back the Dragons for a touchback. Almost thought uh, number 18 brushed against the ball, but they will – will they down it right at the one, or is it going to be a touchback? Let's see what we got here. I believe they're going to bring it back down for the touchback. Yeah, that's what it looks like. We still need to find the mystery man of number 18. Maybe we can give that assignment to uh, – Nick Rice. To Nick Rice. Nick Rice. Where is Nick Rice? We, we, need, we need him on that job here. We, we need would to find out <laughs> a name and number for 18. We've been calling 18 all first half. We don't know who the kid is. Somebody get a hold of Nick Rice. Is he at the um, – Snack stand. He, of course. Have you seen all of the snacks that are in? They have kettle corn. They've got it all. There's there's tents over there with all different kinds of food. Well, it is homecoming, so it, it is the festive atmosphere with lots of food, lots of fun, lots of frolic here. First down and 10 for the Dragons. Misdirection. Going right up the gut. Maybe a pickup of one yard on the carry. Take another look at this. Looks like Will Devis was your ball carrier here for the Dragons. Pickup, we'll call it maybe a yard, really a very short yard on that. But I would think that the Dragons may have to go back into that I mode was, of passing the football here. I was told they're going to build a press box for just you and I for next year. Will they? Will our names be on it? Maybe. It we'll will, we'll, we'll be, we're going to be in the movie. We might as no, well that's true. Names. Looks like we may have a fumble and recovery here for the Cubs, and yes, it is a turnover. So not a great way to start off the second half, as it looks like there might have been a mishandling on the handoff, and just like that. The Cubs of Riverside come up with a rock very close to, actually, they're in the red zone. Alfredo Balthazar coming up and making a key defensive play here for Riverside. And the clock is actually stopping, so maybe they've. Uh, so we're not in a running clock. Maybe they said, hey, we, we flew all the way out of here. We want to <laughs> play. play. <laughs> oh, a little miscue on the handoff there by the Cubs, but Adams maintains possession here for Riverside. Looks like the intended runner was Ricardo Terrazas and unfortunately did not get a clean handle on it. We'll take a second look at this one, Jeff. Yeah, it's like Terrazas was not expecting the football. He, he, he was maybe expecting it to be a fake and that's a exactly, keeper. That's exactly what I yeah. think he thought it was. So, Dodge is a bullet. This time your ball carrier in for the score is Cody Metzner. So just like that, the Cubs are able to take advantage of the turnover by the Dragons and come up with another touchdown. So Cody Metzner done a really fine job of running the rock this afternoon. Comes up with another score. Once again, it'll be a two-point conversion attempt, and we've got whistles on the field. Looks like. Just momentary stoppage to play. So here's the conversion attempt. Play goes off tackle to the right. And going to be short. So their first failure of a two-point conversion for the afternoon. 
Here's a look at your touchdown run by Metzner. And here's a look at your two-point conversion attempt, which wound up being just a bit shy by Terrazas. But it is 62 to 8. So once again, the Cubs of Riverside able to keep the machine moving forward, putting up some points in the scoreboard early here in the third quarter of play. And we had thought there might have been a running uh, time clock, but it looks like we'll just kind of keep to our old ways here. The space station is fully operational. It Still. is. It is. So once again, Riverside, in each of their games so far on the season, have not scored anything less than 54 points. Last week they had a 60 point, 62 point win over Indiana. So they have met that season high so far in this football game. They scored 62 against Indiana? Holy smokes. Yeah. I can't wait to see what we do to uh, New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> Gonzalez on the kickoff. Devis is just going to let it run into the end zone for a touchback. I didn't know New Hampshire was on the schedule. Oh, they they will be. They will you. be. We're, remember, they're going to be on That's the shirt. That's right. We, the we, shirt we, of 50 states and provinces. We've got to make the rounds. <laughs> we've got to let them know the athletic director that we're going to do the 50-state tour here. Yeah, we want New Hampshire. New Hampshire, you're next. Yep. Be prepared, New Hampshire. What is it? Live free or die? Isn't that what Some of that. I believe that is the state motto. Yeah, live free or get beat by CSDR <laughs> Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> that would be better. Yes, yeah, instead of live free or die, just live free or play or lose to uh, CSDR. Okay, first down and 10 here for the Dragons. Devis, your ball carrier, rolls out to his right, has a little bit of daylight, gets hit. Stays on his feet, gets pushed out of bounds. We'll pick up about seven, maybe eight on the carry. Davis, a senior 5'7 running back. Nice rollout on the carry. Has some nice blocking involved. Well, JR, we have a busy, busy week this upcoming week here at the City of Riverside. We're going to be covering games on Thursday. We're going to cover two on Friday. As usual. And then we got, we're going to be back at the college ranks as RCC is looking for their second national and state championship in as, in as many as three years. And they are looking very strong to do it. Your ball carrier gets hauled down for a loss. This time on the carry, Lamberth on the keeper. RCC winning today over Golden West. They lost to Golden West last year, but this year, just to remind them how good they are, RCC won 58 to 21. Wow. David Figueroa making the initial stop. It almost looked like Figueroa had a uh, face mask that was perpetrated against him, but it was not called. So Lambert thrown for a loss. We do know who number 18 is now. I was just told Benny. Gamboa. Benny Gamboa, thank you. So we could say Benny Gamboa about 50 more times because he has touched the ball about 50 times. Yeah, I know he has. In fact, is that Benny right there? I think Benny might be carrying the football. Nope, I was the keeper of Lamberth. So here is the schedule for this upcoming week. On Thursday, we will have Hillcrest versus Ramona in the opener of the River Valley League. The two top favorites of that league going at it. First game of the of the River Valley League. Nick and I will be on the call. And then September 30th on Friday, we will have Arlington versus Patriot. Gazal and I will be on that call. And then just down the road, you you and uh, Nick will be at North as they will battle Orange Vista. Orange Vista right now ranked in the top five in CIF. So a big-time game for you guys next week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that game. I mean, we were at the North game last night as Gamboa, Benny Gamboa, number 18, on the carry. Maybe gets a yard or two out of this one. And I was just told there is no running clock, and we guessed why earlier. So they said they flew all the way out here. They want to play a full a full game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that that's kind of fair, if you will. I, I know they're, they're 
losing pretty dramatically at this point, but they want to come out here and play some football. What's nice is the referees, you know, make that discussion with the coaching staff, essentially kind of giving them the opportunity to say a yay or nay on it. First down to 10 here for the Dragons. Thought there might have been a little bit of movement back to pass. Goes incomplete with the intended receiver being sincere, Vasquez. Yep, so a lot of great football coming your way next weekend here on Riverside TV. So you can keep it right on the channel starting from Thursday through Saturday. And October 1st, RCC versus College of the Canyons. And Gazal and I will be on the call there. Then we go over to October 7th as there will be a flex game as the city of Riverside has been voting on these games. How cool is that? Yeah, we've been giving you, the fan, the opportunity to vote on what you want to see. Keeper by Lamberth. Looks like he'll pick up a first down and plus finally being hauled down. Looks like that might have been a designed type of rollout here for Lambert. So it moves the chains right to about midfield or just beyond midfield. Gives the Dragons hopefully a little bit of daylight here to possibly get themselves into the end zone with the sun beginning to set here at the campus of the California School for the Deaf here in Riverside. That's the thing because this field has, has not been completely developed yet. They're having to use temporary lights that they have to rent. Ooh, they and have to put gasoline in yeah, them. and fire up. So as the sun begins to set, we may have to get those started in just a bit. Nice little breeze coming in finally. Yeah, it's finally beginning to cool down just a bit. Oh, a little bit of a mishandle, misdirection. This will be a loss of about eight, nine yards. Will Devis, they'll see the miscue on the handoff. A little bit of trickery like they do right there. Looks like Devis was actually trying to hand it off to Gamboa, and they just dropped it on the turf. Actually, more of a loss of about 10 yards. So now it brings up a second and 20 scenario here for the Dragons. Clock rolling inside of six minutes to play. Once again, a running play. Gamboa, your ball carrier, gets turned around. There might be a flag for masking. I believe that will go against the Cubs of Riverside. So that'll be the second masking call we've seen this afternoon, Jeff. Yeah, and that, that should push him past the first down here. Yeah, exactly. Good call. From Mr. Jensen, the the bearded wonder, and the other referee talking to uh, Ron Wade. Yeah, that, that is not Tom, Tom Hanks. Yeah, this is Mr. Jensen. He, he is a a, a long-time friend of mine, he, he, I said, hey, what's going on with the beard? I said to him before the game. And he said, no joke. He goes, I get to play Santa. <laughs> and I said, no joke. And he goes, yeah, I'm Santa over in, uh, I think he said in Corona. And then he does some, oh, nice. some nice parties and a great man, a great member of the community here in Riverside. Look at that beard. That's Beautiful cool. beard. I'm going to have to put in my request before the, the game ends here. Stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Lamberth, once again, your ball carrier on the keeper. Been one of the nicer men and been a referee for years as well with Ron Wade. Got to give credit to these guys in the Zebra Stripes. It, it's it's a tough thing to do. Look at that. Look at that glorious Look at that beard here. He doesn't have the belly, though, for Santa yet. Yeah, we probably have to stuff yeah. him a little bit. I'll give him all. We're going to have to. If he put comes him. over to my house, I'll feed him well. Look at that. <laughs> Second down and 10, so there was no pickup on the carry by Lamberth. Man going in motion. Gamboa turns the corner, maybe gets about three to four on the carry. Pushed out of bounds by David Figueroa. Out 
I wonder if the Florida group here, since it was volleyball came out as well, I wonder if they got to do anything in Southern California while they've been out here. Yeah, I'm not sure when they arrived. I don't know if there's any any way of finding that information because it'd be nice just to give the kids an opportunity to just do a little sightseeing maybe. Maybe I, go I to the go see a real beach. <laughs> <laughs> One with waves, Oh, baby, we're going to start getting the oh, nasty yeah. letters from the Floridians in just a bit. <laughs> Dump off into the flat to Gamboa, still on his feet, pushed out of bounds. Stop being made here by Ricardo Terrazas. Maybe go to Disneyland. Uh, but they don't really need But they've got they Disney World. Why do they need yeah, Disneyland? They, they they don't, don't. They've got the big stuff. Yeah, they got the. They have the, they have Disneyland on steroids. <laughs> We're just, uh, you know, the, just the little part. Well, that's, you know, one thing I need to do. Well, I've never been to Florida, so that's one thing on my list. You have I, never I been have to Florida? I've never been to Florida. No. You know, I've been down in the south, been down in the Georgia and the Carolinas, but have completely missed Florida, so that's one thing i got to put on the list here. I love Florida. My father-in-law lived in Tampa for a while. And I have several friends that live in the Florida Keys. Davis looks like he was trying to throw the football, scrambling around for his life, will be caught down for a loss, and it will be a turnover on downs here by the Dragons. So, unfortunately, the short-lived drive Turns up nothing. And look, Davis, he was looking momentarily to toss it down the field. Nobody there makes the spin move and gets wrapped up for the huge loss. And now the Cubs will come up with a first down and 10 scenario. Great field position here. Just outside the red zone. If you're watching and you're wondering why is the field so much, it's, it only goes up to 40. It's an 80-yard field. We talked about that at the beginning of the right. game. Shorter field. Shorter field. Narrower field as well. Okay, what is it, uh, 73 feet? Is that what it was? Uh, nice. I, I go by the yardage. Oh, yardage. I think it's, I think it's 40, 43 yards. 43 yards, yeah. that's right. Compared to the normal 53 yards. Give goes right up the middle. Bit of daylight continuing on his feet well down the uh, first down marker. Ricardo Terrazas, your ball carrier. And multiple flags coming in after the play. foul. I hope not. These two teams should be playing for as a friendly as they call in soccer. What are they going to call? Yeah, they're still marking things off or looking to mark. Oh, yeah, yeah, personal, personal foul. foul. Yeah. On the defense. So this will give some extra added yardage which really the Cubs kind of don't <laughs> need at this point. And the Dragons don't uh, have the luxury of giving it giving it away like that. Yeah, they, they have hit their allotment per yard for I the game. I think so. And I then some. So. Yeah. Clock is stopped at uh, inside of 3.55. Well, now the breeze is beginning to kick up, a, kick up a little bit. Feels kind of nice. It helps in my house at home. No air AC is getting some wind. First and 10. Devin looking to pass. Dumps it off with a man wide open for a touchdown catch made by Darius Zaremka. So, Trevin Adams comes up with another passing score. Trevin Adams has had a game that most people would love to have stats for an entire year. Think about it. It, it is. I, I mean, we, we've talked about it early on. Just by himself, he has generated over 1,280 yards of offense, which surpasses many high school teams, let alone individuals. Okay, so, so let's figure this one out. I'm going to uh, 1,280 yards. 1,280. Intended uh, on the two-point conversion comes up nowhere on this one. I think we'll take a second look at the touchdown. Nice little play-action move as Adams tosses it to Zaremka, comes up with the score. Now pushes it to a 68-8 contest in favor of Riverside. So I, I can't wait to see the stats at the end of this one here for uh, for Adams. Man, he's he's piling it on. Well, just put it this way. Adams, so far uh, this year, if he's 
How many yards? Twelve hundred and twelve eighty one coming 12, into this coming game. into today. Yeah. So he has he has marched over a half a mile. <laughs> and, and if you add today, I bet he's close to a mile, a mile of football. I think so. When you when you think of the long f- pass plays that he's completed this afternoon. Yeah, I'm telling you, he's close. Because remember, five thousand two hundred eighty feet are in a mile. Yes, he is at almost. I mean, he's over. 4,000 today. Absolutely. There's no question about so that. So I'm going to say 45. He is close to a mile of football, and we are only in the fifth game of the year. Halfway through. Halfway through. There's he, still a lot of he's a, He could get two, three miles of football. In Easily. Him. That's crazy. Easily. As well as the fact he came into this game both with running and passing a total of 24 touchdowns. Oh, I can't, so even, I can't even walk a mile, for <laughs> gosh sakes. <laughs> Gonzalez on the kick, puts it into the end zone for a touchback. I mean, those are video game numbers. My son's it play is. video games. And they're it like, is. Yeah, my, my running back had 450 yards in the first quarter. Wait a sec, what? Those are video game numbers, for gosh sakes. What an amazing feat. Still got plenty of time here. Still almost uh, 15 minutes of football left. Yeah, I'm telling you, you got to send those boys over to the Gorham house. Then I'll send the Gorhams over to their house, and uh, I want my little guys to be tough like that. Yeah, absolutely. Go talk to coach after a game. A little foreign exchange student. To <laughs> foreign exchange within the city of yeah, Riverside. I, That's I can learn sign language, and uh, they can just parent my kids to be tough. Toss-off pass intended for Devis goes nowhere incomplete. Second down. I think that's kind of a cool idea, though. I mean, I, not in the sense I want to get rid of my kids, but just to learn the fact of American Sign Language. I think everybody who is watching this game, really, you know, I, I know they, they do it in certain high schools, but I think it should be. Uh, it should almost be a mandatory thing, almost like you learn Spanish or yes, French. Yes, like it should be Why offered. Not make, make it a, a viable option yeah. for somebody to learn that that second language. I took Latin in high school for four years. I never used Latin, but I sure could sure use American Sign Language. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Think. You know, I was I was actually kind of marveling as as there was a pickup on the play for the Dragons. Davis on the carry, but it was it was fascinating to me to watch what was happening during halftime because it's interesting because it is kind of silent around here because everybody is communicating in American Sign Language. Completely different atmosphere. It is uh, it is like being in a different culture, if you will. Almost like if you were to visit Mexico or visit Japan or something where there's a, a complete different language going on, but everybody com- completely communicating with each other uh, just with, you know, through, their, through the, the American Sign Language. Twisting move here on the run. Maybe forward progress of two for yeah. Will Davis. Yeah, I, I only thing I could use my Latin for is if I were to go to the Vatican and talk to the Pope. I have no no use for me to yeah. ever learn Latin, or yeah. if I became a doctor. Right. Gosh, no, I was or never going to be a could, doctor. We could make you a priest. Yeah, I could. I could, can, I could. We well, could do that. I should, but now I have kids, and I don't know if that's possible. But I, I honestly, and I mean this, and this isn't on a soapbox, but. You know, I, I do think in schools it should be it should be a requirement to you could choose. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'd have been a whole lot better off if I had learned sign language coming into today because, like you said, the halftime, it was a different culture. But it, it was. was. But it was smooth. It, 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 was, it was very interesting to watch. It was fascinating. Turnaround move by Lambert on a fourth down will be well short of the first down marker, so it's another turnover on downs here by the Dragons. Yeah, they had uh, a homecoming, uh, qu- king and queen, and uh, did a parade around the track, yeah. which was, was very just, cool. Just your typical homecoming game for a high school. It just, uh, everything is being communicated with American Sign Language. And you know what? Uh, it's amazing. I would imagine there's a lot of people in Riverside who don't know that this community is here, essentially. Yeah, it's a great forum for not only to watch this great football, but just to know that uh, CSDR is here and has been here for so many years. Yeah. And the successes that come out of the school, are, it's, it's incredible. It's just an incredible storyline that I think 
you know, they're making a movie about it for a reason yeah. because it's so inspirational. Exactly. Adams on the carry, picks up another first down here for the Cubs, so puts themselves ever closer to putting some more points on the scoreboard. Terrazas, your ball carrier, whistles on the play. <laughs> Terrazas just keeps the feet moving. We'll see what the call is. I'm, I'm gathering there might be motion. Yep. Motion on the play against the Cubs, so that will bring that one back. Great look at the great Ron Wade. Yes, as was spoken about, there is a movie in the works about this team. I can't wait. I'll be watching it on Disney with my family. Yeah. Can't wait to see Brad Pitt playing me. Mm -hmm. Rick, uh, Jimmy Smith's playing you. There you go. Just a cameo uh, for those two guys to show up. Uh, you know, we'll put a phone call in. I'm sure they'll do it. Yeah, I would imagine. Adams on the keeper. Gets brought down by Gamboa. One of the first times I think we've seen Adams brought down behind the line of scrimmage here. Not often seen. No. Nice wrestle uh, move there. It's almost like um, steer wrestling by Gamboa. Going wrestling out in the rodeo circuit. Yeah, absolutely. Inside of 30 seconds remaining in the third. Terrazas, your ball carrier, nothing but green, has to elude one defender, finally gets wrestled down inside of the five. So once again, the Cubs punching it closer. Don't know if they're going to get off a play before the third quarter comes to a close as the clock remains rolling here. And that ends the third quarter of play. So as we head into the fourth quarter, it is a 68-8 to eight lead by the Cubs of Riverside over Florida. Very dominant performance. They are right on the cusp of putting another one into the end zone here to get themselves into the 70s as far as a score. And that will be their highest score. Actually, 68 is their highest of the season so far. And this one will put it even further into the ranks. They did have a 78-point ball game last October against Desert Chapel, where they beat them 78-18. to 18. Also, way back in November of last year, they had a 70-12 to 12 clubbing of Santa Clarita Christian in the playoffs. So they're very capable, and um, they're in, they, they've been in the 70s before, <laughs> so it's nothing new for these guys. No, it's like a basketball score. Look at the beautiful view we have nice. today. Beautiful day. Might have been a little on the warm side, but, hey, it's it's late summer here in Southern California. This is what you expect in September. And remember, this month is Rail Safety Month. Sea tracks think train. September is Rail Safety Month. Visit OLI. Dot org for more information about railroad safety. Absolutely. Very important. We do have various railroad crossings here in the city of Riverside, so please be aware. Third down situation. Terrazas, your ball carrier, gets hit right just past the line of scrimmage, but he's in for the score. So a nice mix of ball carriers we've seen throughout the afternoon, and now Terrazas gets to be part of that action. Ricardo is a senior. So getting his opportunity to punch it into the end zone. Once again, Cubs will be looking for a two-point conversion. Now sitting at 74 points, so they have surpassed their highest scoring of the 2022 season. When was the last time you saw a 74 put on a board? Uh, in a basketball game. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Terrazas in the backfield. Great view from our, our uh, end zone cam there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's nice. Looks very nice. Well, it looks like we have a change of quarterback as well. Gio Visco is now going to take the snap on this one at least. 
they got to train somebody. Yeah, you know. To uh, take over the mantle. Well, Adams needs to maybe sit down and, and ensure that he's not injured or or hurting as we head into league play starting next week. You have a, uh, a substantial lead like we're seeing right now. He could be tired. He probably just said, Dad, can you take <laughs> me out of the game? <laughs> That's true. Well, well, th- this brings up an interesting question. What do you call him when you're out on the field? Do you call him coach or you call him dad? That depends on if you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Visco will take the snap back to pass, look into the end zone, and it is caught for the score. We also have another new player making uh, some waves here. Christian Jimenez, number 87, uh, an inside linebacker, an offensive lineman, a senior, 5'10", 200 pounds, coming up with the catch and the two-point conversion score. A great play. It's just a, a quick strike there. Nicely done. You notice a lot of high school teams, though, and, and, and the pros, the college as well, the quick, th- the quick throws of the quarterbacks this year, a lot faster than we've seen in years past. I mean, they're taking one step, and they're getting rid of the ball a lot quicker I than we've seen. I think that's the way, the, just the way football is flowing now. You've it is. You've got to get it out of your hands real quick. You can't sit there and look for something to happen. you just got to make it happen right off the bat. And it's, it's really, really changed the whole scope. You know, there's no huddles. They, they don't run huddles, but it's, it's no huddle offense. And I'm telling you, these quarterbacks get the ball out of their hands so quickly. Right. So I don't think there's any kind of injury situation for Adams. I think they just want to sit him down and let him rest the remainder of the afternoon. I see him standing up on the sidelines, so there's no issue with him at all. Get some ice on that shoulder. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, for the <laughs> amount of amount of throws he's had for the afternoon. And give him some flip-flops. Those feet have to be sore. Give him, give him an ice, ice bath. So it looks like potentially we'll see Visco the remainder of the afternoon as your quarterback here for the Cubs. On the kickoff, Gonzalez sticks it into the end zone for a touchback, and the Dragons now will operate with a first down and ten. Now, you, you and uh, Nick Rice, when you guys work together, you guys have, like, player of the game, I see, some, at times. We we do. I mean, last night, uh, you, you um, I forget his name, you Laga Paella from North. Oh, I'm, pro- I'm probably mispronouncing his first name. Um, uh, looks like we'll toss down to the sideline to Nick Rice. So, yes. Nick, take it away, Nick. You guys, time out, White. JR, that was really bad. Uy Ungalale. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so I'm joined by Alexandro here. He has been not just a valuable player, but also a coach for the program for a long time. Alexandro, what has been your role over the years with this school? So currently I'm a defensive statistician for the boys. Now I'm a former coach and I really am enjoying the team success, especially building on what we did last year. Yeah, as a statistician, there is a lot of <laughs> interceptions and takeaways that you guys have had, and it's got to feel pretty good seeing this program rise to where it is right now. Yeah. Seeing the boys every week playing in different positions, like in, you know, every time I'm putting down my stats, it's never the same guy collecting all the stats. It's all these other, all the other boys as well. It's a pleasure to watch them all grow and develop. And you've been around as a coach and as a statistician now for a long time. What's the difference between these guys that you see playing now versus when you were playing and when you were coaching? So the coach here holds much higher expectations than my former coaches held us to. You know, he has very high hopes for these guys, and I, my hands, my hat goes off to this team. That speaks a lot to Coach Adams. What sort of personality does he bring to the team that maybe the other coaches were a little different in? Different expectations, much higher expectations, and instilling that belief that they can do it, and that motivates the players. Some of the previous coaches lacked that motivation, and I believe that's the key, motivating the players to succeed. So, Alexandro, you saw this club come on the doorstep of a state championship last year. Uh, what does this team need to do to become champs this season? Working throughout their summer program, the weightlifting, that is going to be a key to the success. We did not have that instilled last year, and now we see the boys hitting harder. I can hear it. And, uh, wow, it's impressive. 
Alexandra, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And uh, for the rest of you guys, it's really been an incredible experience seeing all of these players and all these former coaches and their experiences. And I'll just say the same thing. This is a special time to be a member of uh, the Riverside Cubs. Guys. Okay, thank you, Nick. The Rice Man down on the field there, giving us all the insight as to the different inner workings of this Cubs squad. Great insight as to how this program just uh, is run as your ball carrier. Yeah, and as, as a former coach, I would love to uh, come watch your practice, you know, and, and see the weight uh, – weight room and see what they're doing in the weight room i mean obviously they're doing everything correctly and i think a lot of other schools maybe should come down and and see what these guys are doing down here you know there's one thing uh we've not really talked about and i've seen this in a few different interviews with the kids and with the coaches and that you know the cubs think that they have the advantage because of the hearing impairment of the visual acuity compared to people who have hearing they have the ability to read what is going on. They have greater sense of having to use the visual aspect of the game to give themselves somewhat of an advantage. They're, you know, they're almost like Avengers, like superheroes. There you go. Honestly, it, it, it sounds silly, but honestly, I mean, you, like you said, you have to be more aware, uh, almost acutely more aware of what's going on Absolutely. all the time. Absolutely, since you do not have that ability to hear the sounds of what's happening there on the line of scrimmage. The way you uh, utilize your visual aspects is, is pretty tremendous. And looks like we may have a fumble or no, nope, just a loss and another turnover of downs. Your ball carrier was France Velbrun. And now the Cubs will take over on downs in really good territory here. But, yeah, in, in some ways it does make sense because they have to rely so strongly on the visual aspect of their senses that maybe they can read a whole lot more as to what is going on with their individual defenders and the team that they're facing as a whole. Yeah, and I'd love to, to watch a film study with, with Coach and the team. I think that would be uh, an incredible th thing to see. Yeah, very insightful. So let's see if the Cubs can get themselves into the 80s. Catch is made and in for the score. On the catch, once again, we have Christian Jimenez making the touchdown catch. Whistles on the play afterwards. Are we going to get this called back? No, he did give it a uh Conway did give a symbol for a touchdown. So Yeah, okay. Oh, well. Yeah, for some reason there was a little bit of confusion there momentarily, but Jimenez is credited with the touchdown. And they will once again look to make the two-point conversion attempt. Terrazas, your ball carrier, easily pushes it in, and he's in for the score. We are now at 82 points. 84 points. 84 points, excuse me. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if the uh, scoreboard, if we keep going here, I don't think we have enough. Uh, we don't have room for triple digits. You know? So if they go beyond and it's like zero, uh, they score like 103, and the other says eight, hey, Florida can say they, they had a victory if they just took a picture of the, <laughs> the scoreboard. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, I, you know, I want to know what the, the – homecoming festivities are like here i want to know what they're you know i think nick rice needs to get in on this i want to know if they're going to have a dance that's true. i want to know all of the 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 shindigs that are going on here is there a homecoming. barbecue happening can we can we get in on the barbecue yeah i mean I, i'm always good for food i'm six eight two ninety i yeah we gotta feed you man you've been looking pretty gone I, lately i am wasting i am wasting you're away. wasting away man i'm like a waif model <laughs> I am under 300 for, like, the first time in a while. My kids are telling me I have to do only drink water. Stand by. I'm, I'm going to run to the snack bar and grab you a couple of Snicker bars here I just am, a bit. I am wasting away. You've got me concerned, Jeff. You should be. You should be. Anytime I'm below 300, you should be really concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Clock inside of six minutes to play here. 
as it's been a very strong performance by the Cubs of Riverside. Kind of a line drive going to Davis. He's going to try to pick and choose his way with his blockers. Maybe gets it right to about the 20. And clock will remain rolling here. So looking down the road now, it's obvious that the Cubs are going to pick up another one for the win column. They'll head off to Calvary Chapel next weekend on a Saturday evening game. Oh, they beat them. Oh, that was a close one last year. 66 57. That is close for those guys. That's a great basketball. Are you sure that's not a basketball <laughs> score? <laughs> that's what it looks like. <laughs> so they play Calvary Chapel next week? Calvary Chapel next week in the Downey area. So if you happen to be down in that location, I would definitely go take in that game. Calvary Chapel is a pretty decent squad. Then after that, they head over to my neck of the woods in Rancho Cucamonga with United Christian Academy on October the 7th. Oh, they beat them Maybe last I, year. Can we convince Scott Brocious to go to Rancho Cucamonga? Can, can we put in that request, Scott Brocious? We should. We should. Our executive producer? 60, that way I can walk to work. Can I can walk. walk to the game. 64 to 20 last year they beat United Christian Academy. Yeah. It was I, on senior night. I volunteer for that game. Looks like we have another new quarterback switch here, this time for the Dragons, as Devis is your ball carrier. Picks up about two to three on the carry. Further down the road, they'll take on Desert Chapel on October the 13th, and they'll round out the regular season against Laverne Lutheran okay, they beat on October the 28th. Desert Chapel, actually, they beat 78-18. to 18. Wow. And what was the last one you said? Uh, Laverne Lutheran will be the final game of the what season. Did they play there? Oh, they beat them last year. Oh, they, 68 they, to nothing. They put a, a donut on them, 68 <laughs> to nothing. These guys, I mean, they, they don't mess around. No, they, they roll up the score, and again, they just love to flex their muscles. You know, some people might call it running up the score, but again, yeah. to me, it's almost the intimidation factor you have to put out there for your next opponent, saying, hey, yeah. this is what we're capable of doing. This is what we're going to bring to you guys next time around. Yep, and I agree. Look. Looks like we're going to toss it down to Nick Rice. Nick, what do you got for us? All right, I'm joined by Mike Anderson, former Riverside Cub and part of the uh, deaf community here in the city of Riverside and has been so involved with this program over the years. And you're familiar with this program and their community involvement over the next couple of weeks. What is going on with this uh, program? So I worked here for 31 years, and I, I'm a newbie retiree, and it's just fun to keep, you know, my relationship with this community and this school continuing. So I'm also involved with the model deaf community and I work with the Office of the Mayor and the City Council to represent the deaf community of Riverside. And we just completed our Deaf Awareness Week. So that's something that, that happens throughout the United States. And so this is part of one of those events, we had Florida School for the Deaf and Blind come out. We had a softball team with the Riverside Police Department last Saturday. And unfortunately, we did not come out on the winning end. They beat us 9-8. to eight. And uh, there's been multiple events going on. We had our museum. We had deaf painters and artwork. And those artworks were given to the Riverside Art Museum. And there's been multiple things going on throughout the week. Well, Mike, I think you also brought up to me recently about the mayors coming to uh, this program. Am I correct? So our model deaf community and the deaf community of Riverside will be hosting Breakfast with the Mayor. And that's coming up in a few weeks. I believe that will be on October 17th. And we've invited special guests. So we'll have the police chief, the fire chief, the city manager because we want to have them involved to know what's going on with the deaf community here on Riverside uh, for safety purposes, for awareness purposes, and just to get to know each other. So I'm really looking forward to that. So Mike, with the program for 31 years, now retired, what's the feeling like coming to the football game, not as a worker, but as just a fan? I do miss the students watching them grow, flourish, and become seniors, and then graduate, and they always come back. I'm like, hey, my former students are now coming back to work with us, so it's really nice. It's a really tight-knit community. So yeah, it's just nice to see everyone again, regardless of myself being a retiree or an employee. 
Uh, very fair enough. So now that the program is on its heights that we haven't really seen ever before, fresh off a trip to the state championship, what do you expect for this team for the years to come? Well, I've seen the growth and the quality, the athleticism, uh, including the education. People are now moving to Riverside to be a part of this. The program's much stronger, and hopefully that will continue, you know, in and out of school. Not only for sports, but leadership, scholastically. That is interesting. So you brought up that guys are now wanting to come to this program. What do they tell you as the main reason why they want to come? It's a bigger school, that's one reason. And some come from a deaf family, so they may want to come here for employment, and now their deaf children can attend here as students. So people move for that reason. Some people have retired, and they want to come move to Riverside because of the accessible deaf community that they have and those relationships that they can build upon. There's multiple reasons. It's endless, the list of reasons. Well, Mike Anderson with us. We are so happy to have you involved, whether it's with the program or not. And, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Anytime. All right, guys, back to you to wrap up the game. Great. Thank you so much, Nick. Some more insight as to how this program is run so very efficiently. We've had a, uh, a number of things happen while Nick was doing the interview. We've had a fumble occur here for the Dragons, and that has turned over the ball, too the Cubs of Riverside, and they come up with another penalty. Clock is rolling inside of 120 to play. They said they were having a, was it a breakfast with the, with the mayor? Is that what they said? That's what, it, yeah, they're going to meet with the mayor. So yeah. that, that gives just more insight as to how things are beginning to formulate for our community to interact well, more with the, the community here of, of the uh, folks at the California School for the Deaf in Riverside. Well, they said they were inviting the city manager, the police chief, the fire chief. Well, where's our invite? That's Anytime true. there's food, you know, we're pillars we, in the community we should here. should be invited for that. Darn right. Get us on the list. I'll come out and have lunch <laughs> and, or breakfast or whatever you guys got going on. What's ever on the menu, Jeff will be there. Uh, and I want to learn everything about what's going on here at CSDR. I mean, just the growth in the last few years that I see, you know, being a lifelong resident here of, of Riverside, it's just an incredible uh, school, and they do a great job here, and I hope to see them grow in the future. Clock is rolling, and I think the Cubs are just going to let the clock roll out here. So they will come up with a huge win of 84-8. to eight. I'm sure this is not the contest that Florida was hoping to have in terms of a result. But nonetheless, we truly appreciate the fact that they came out this far to play this contest and that will end the ball game so the cubs of riverside once again a huge win numerically to put another one into the win column and just keep moving towards that potential playoff and championship later down the road jeff i'll tell you what it's unfinished business but today they took care of business here against the state of florida we're hoping to have a chat with Coach Adams. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can make that happen. But, yeah, you know, uh, kudos to the, to the Floridians for showing up, coming this far, bringing both their football and volleyball squads to come on down. And once again, uh, please keep these kids in your prayers as they got to head back to Florida. I'm just looking at the news right now. There's a statewide emergency in Florida because of Tropical Storm Ian. So the entire state is potentially affected by this, this storm that's bearing down on Florida as we speak. Well, like I said, they can all stay at my house there you this, go. this weekend. I don't have air conditioning, but I have a pool, and I have a lots of cold beverages and food and hot dogs at my house. There we go. So hopefully momentarily we'll have a chat with Coach Adams. You know, but once again, the numbers put up by Trevin Adams have got to be staggering. I don't have official stats right in front of me, but uh, we'll take a look probably by Monday or Tuesday on Max Preps, maxpreps.com. For those of you who do not know, it's a great way to get yourself all the information you need on everything that's happening 
on high school football and you can specifically select your favorite team especially here in the city of Riverside find out how they're doing found out how the stats are beginning to formulate for the season it's a great way to find great information on everything high school sports not just football yeah and remember Monday afternoons we have the coaches perspective Absolutely. on Riverside TV we have four games this week we've got a college game and and two two games on Friday and a game on Thursday so I'll tell you what we are going to be really busy in fact Thursday Hillcrest versus Ramona on Friday a doubleheader Arlington versus Patriot North at Orange Vista and on Saturday RCC versus College of the Canyons as RCC going for that second national championship and st second state championship in three years. I tell you what, there's probably not a, a more committed channel and city to uh, local high school sports than Riverside TV. Uh, I just can't think of anybody else who's doing this much amount of programming uh, for what happens here in the high school and the college level with Riverside Community College. So it's great to just keep it tuned right here to Riverside TV. We will always bring you the best in local sports. Still trying to get the opportunity to talk to Nick. I think he's uh, doing what he can to get Coach Adams here, but it looks like everybody's huddled around the team right now at midfield and celebrating such a huge win here on this homecoming evening. There you see the group of well-wishers, family, friends, I'm sure, on board here. Love to see what's going on. I, uh, I, am, I imagine the coaches are talking to both teams. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thanking uh, each other. And I'm glad that we didn't see any major injuries today. No, no. You know what was interesting, too, because of the heat, I was expecting a lot of people to cramp up, and I saw nobody really cramping up this afternoon. So it was great uh, from the trainer standpoint that everybody was kept hydrated. There was no situation. There was no issues in terms of injuries or anything of that nature. Well, we're trying to jockey to get coach and they're getting right in the middle there look at everybody you know another interesting aspect Jeff that we really haven't talked about you, you consider the fact that this school is a K through 12 so you could develop players way early yes yes you can you know it that's a very interesting thought you could you could develop kids way <laughs> At the sixth, fifth, and sixth grade level, and start getting them ready for high school football. What do you mean the fifth and sixth? We're gonna go. We are gonna get we'll get those kids out from kindergarten on. Absolutely. Well, it looks like we may not get the opportunity to talk to Coach Adams. Are are we? Okay, it looks like uh, we're not going to have that opportunity because of technical issues. So we apologize for that because we would love to talk to Coach Adams. But it looks like the Gremlins have come out, Jeff, and it uh, looks like that will not take place. So to wrap things up, it is a huge win here for the Cubs of Riverside with a score of 84-8. to eight. They move on towards the league play and another big round of uh, – Football coming your way next week in here on Riverside TV. For all of our award-winning crew, for Jeff Gorham, I'm J.R. Ibarra. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next weekend.